You look like he, it looks like he's not going to gain much yardage cover, but then he turns it on, and he, all of a sudden he's got 10. You know, uh, I was amazed to hear how fast he really is. He's, uh, he runs a 4.35. He has been clocked that fast. He's one of few guys who has ever run the 40-yard dash that fast. Some pro scouts have, have clocked him at that. And uh, he just doesn't look that fast to me because he really glides. In at wide receiver for Pitt, number 19, Randy Rudishan. More known for his special team kamikaze action. We'll probably see more of Rudishan later in the game. It's first and 10 from the West Virginia 30. Kavanaugh on the option. Kavanaugh inside the 25 to about the 23-yard line. Chuck Smith, number 78, a 6'3", 240-pound senior tackle, makes the tackle on Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh came back pretty fast after a fractured fibula, and uh, Tommy Usyk did a heck of a job of filling in for him. You might want to amplify on that because you cover this team. You... Usyk was an amazing story. Kavanaugh, as you see there, was out for a few games with a broken ankle bone, and Usyk was like six-team quarterback back a few uh, months ago. He uh, wasn't even on scholarship. He came in, earned the starting job, and kept the Panthers undefeated. It is second down and two. Bobby Hutton, the fullback, gets the first down as he crosses the 20 to about the 17 or 18-yard line. Joe Jellick, number 65, and Norm Patterson, number 91, make the tackle for West Virginia on Hutton. It was during that period when Usyk was the quarterback that Pitt went back more to the I formation, and it gave Tony Dorsett a chance to carry the ball more. It was during that period that Tony really racked up most of his yards. However, Dorsett has indicated that he's glad to have Kavanaugh back in there because it gives him more balance. It is first and 10 for the Pitt Panthers from the West Virginia 17. Dorsett on the pitch to the right. Uh, gets a block from Hutton. Breaks a tackle down the sideline. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. A very typical Tony Dorsett run for a Pitt Panther touchdown. And with 7.33 left to go in the first quarter, the Panthers take the lead 6 to nothing on a 17-yard burst by the Hawk. You see why this young man is the most illustrious ground gainer in NCAA history. Already has nine records in the NCAA book. He is within reach of 18. He has rushed for over three miles. He has that kind of speed we talked about. This is the power sweep. And I think we ought to say that he gets some terrific blocking along the way. Outstanding blocking. I think one of the great things about the Pitt Panthers is their downfield blocking. They've been super at it, and Carson Long has been super at that. 37 in a row, extra points for Carson Long. The Pitt Panthers lead 7 to nothing. We'll be back at Pitt Stadium in just a moment. After, after watching uh, O.J. Simpson at USC in 1967 and 1968, I didn't think I'd ever see a tailback that would be that good, but I think I found the man. There he is. You get an idea of his speed, too. He just turned on a burst and left people along the sideline. He uses a change of speed better than anybody I've ever seen. There you see the score. Pittsburgh 7-0 over West Virginia. Carson Long set to kick off to the West Virginia Mountaineers. 40, Lee Dowell. 44, Dwayne Woods. And 32, Dave Riley. Deep to receive for West Virginia. Seven thirty-three left to go in the first quarter. Carson Long setting the ball up on the near hash mark. And as we mentioned a little bit, Carson Long set the record a week ago of the most kick scoring points in the history of NCAA football. Nobody knew about it till Tuesday. <laughs> Dorsett's been breaking so many records. Nobody understood what was going on. We want to welcome the people from the majority of the country who've been watching Notre Dame and Alabama to the pit. West Virginia game here at Pitt Stadium and the Mountaineers are in trouble on the goal line on the kickoff following a Pitt touchdown. The West Virginia Mountaineers have recovered, but they are backed up and the Pitt Panthers are fired up. The ball on the one half yard line and Tony Dorsett has just run 17 yards for a Pitt touchdown. And there you see the score, seven to nothing Pittsburgh. We have about seven and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. This is Steve Zabriskie along with Lee Grosscup. Once again, a look at Tony Dorsett on the first touchdown of the day. 17-yard run. It's the power pitch around right in. All right, let's go back to South Bend and Chris Schenkel. West Virginia, first down and 10. From their own one-half yard line, Kendra passing from the end zone complete to Lewis at the 11-yard line. It looks to be enough yardage for the first down making the tackle number 37, Leroy Felder, and number 31, safety man Bob Jury for the Pitt Panthers.
Boy, this is a dangerous call back in your own end zone to throw the down and in to the wide receiver. He has a lot of confidence in Steve Lewis and the quick slant in, though. Kendra to Lewis, the best uh, passing combination for the Mountaineers. They've got them off the goal line quickly. First and 10 from their own 11. Here's a flare pass out to Woods. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage. Leroy Felder, number 37, coming up from his defensive back position, a junior at 5'10 and 190, making an outstanding defensive play. The loss is about two yards back to the nine-yard line. It'll be second down and 12 now for the Mountaineers. Quick screen from back in there. That's another risky call. Uh, Leroy Felder is one of three good ones in that defensive secondary. What do they have? A total of 19 interceptions? 19 going into this game. And uh, Bob Jury, as a matter of fact, is tied for third in the nation. Kendra rolling out to the right on third down. And out of bounds. Cedric Thomas made the completion, but he was out of bounds. 21 J.C. Wilson there defending for Pitt. I believe I said third down. That was second down. It is now third down and 12 for the Mountaineers from their own nine-yard line. Third and 12, and in this obvious passing situation, should they choose to continue to go upstairs, the uh, most likely target would be split in Steve Lewis, who is far and away the leading receiver on the team. Just four shy of uh, 40, which would make him second for a season reception. Third down and 12. Easily on the draw play. Walter Easley out near the 20-yard line. Arnie Weatherington, number 59, makes the tackle for Pitt. He'll be short of first down yardage by about two and a half to three yards. And so West Virginia will have to kick it away from deep in their own territory. The Pitt cheerleaders on the sideline, and they have had a lot to cheer about this year. Fetty back to punt. Willie Taylor, 29, deep to receive for the Panthers, standing at his own 40-yard line. Fetty will kick it away from about his own 10. Rushes on. Taylor lets it bounce. It takes a pit bounce inside the 50-yard line at about the 48-yard line of West Virginia. And it's down there by the Mountaineers. This Monday on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the Juice will be in action, and the Buffalo Bills will go up against the Dallas Cowboys from Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas. It has not been a good year for the Bills, but the Juice is always a show, and you won't want to miss that one. The Dallas Cowboys are 8-1 this year, and they have as good a record as anybody in the league, with Staubach enjoying a super season. It's an important game for the Cowboys. They have only a one-game lead over the St. Louis Cardinals. Monday night at 9, NFL, Monday night football. Dorset on first and 10. 78, Chuck Smith makes the tackle. A gain of about three yards on the play. The ball just shy of the Mountaineer 45-yard line. It'll be second down and seven. Well, after an opening series in which Matt Cavanaugh elected to go upstairs, he's gone back to the basics. Been a TD show from there on. Again, split backs in the backfield. Second down and seven. Cavanaugh on the option. Dorset in trouble, reverses his field. White shirts are looking for Tony. He'll lose a couple of yards. 90, Ken Braswell. And number 13, Johnny Shell up from the secondary make the tackle. John Majors told us yesterday that uh, his coaching has made Tony Dorsett a heck of a runner, just the same way uh, Jack Curtis made me a heck of a passer at the University of Utah. I don't know if you can coach this sort of thing or not. I think there are certain natural instincts involved right here. And Tony says on the field sometimes he feels a little bit supernatural, sort of dreamlike. It looks like a dream out there sometimes, doesn't it? 36 yards so far for Dorsett. It is third down and 10 following the loss of three. Kavanaugh. Still looking for a receiver. Hangs it up out of bounds. Playing it safe on third and ten. And the Panthers will kick it away from the West Virginia 48-yard line. And so after the Panthers took it in on good field position, their previous possession, West Virginia rises to the occasion. And Cover, they have some white shirts following Mr. Dorset around this afternoon. <laughs> Larry Swider back deep to punt. High punt hanging up there. Fair catch called for by Pridemore. Tom Pridemore takes it at the 14-yard line. And the Mountaineers again will be deep in their own hole as they go on offense once again. We'll be back with Pittsburgh leading West Virginia 7 0. I don't think you're in Pitt Stadium this afternoon. This is the first sellout of the year for the Panthers. 56,500. And a lot of them are from West Virginia, with Morgantown being only 60 miles away. This game, whether it's played there or here, always plays to an overflow crowd. The Mountaineers go on offense, first and 10, from just short of their own 15-yard line. Straight up the middle, the tackle made by 68, Don Parrish. 
Easley, the ball carrier, once again. Easley's a pretty big kid for a freshman. He's 6'2 and 2'10. You ran that play just a couple times, didn't you? <laughs> I run it a few too many times. That's why I'm not playing anymore. <laughs> there you see what the West Virginia offense has done. 327 yards per game, and they're passing nearly as much as they're running. Pretty good balance. They would like to have that kind of balance today. Second down and six after the gain of four. The pass to Woods. Woods got a first down. He's at the 30-yard line. The tackle made by Jeff Delaney, number 14. And Cupper, it looks, is a penalty marker down on the field, however, and the play may be nullified, but it looks as if that's West Virginia's game plan to open up that Panther defense a little bit. Well, you know, they've got the, the guy in Dan Kendrick. He can really throw the football. He can do a lot of things. Uh, he can throw running to his right or his left, as you see right here. And he scatters five quite a bit. He'll bring guys out of the backfield to utilize the three primary receivers. And uh, this may go in favor of the Mountaineers. It looks as if it is against the Pitt Panthers. They're talking. The number 75, Steve Early, the offensive captain for the West Virginia Mountaineers. It was a second down and six play. Woods got enough yardage for the first down. And the Panthers have backed up a ways, so we'll wait to see what West Virginia has decided to do. There were two flags dropped on the play. It is defensive holding against the Pitt Panthers and it gives West Virginia a first down at their own 33-yard line. This is the best field position they've had today, Lee. Kendra is a streaky passer. Boy, he can get real hot and hurt you. Just uh, like example was the last drive last year in the ball game that thrilling 17-14 win. I think he completed six straight. First and 10 Mountaineers operating from their own 33. Cedric Thomas in motion. Kendra rolling out. Pressure's on. Kendra. Trying to find some running room. There's some blue shirts around him, and they run him out of bounds. 37, Leroy Felder, the first Panther to get to him. He picked up a little bit of yardage, however, out past the 35-yard line. There you see the situation. We're in the first quarter with 3.28 to play and Pitt leading 7 to nothing. Good speed in that Pittsburgh secondary. Leroy Felder is a 4-6 man. There's Frank Signetti, who, as we mentioned earlier, was uh, an assistant right here at Pittsburgh. The year that John Majors had his first head coaching job at Iowa State. Both Signetti and Majors are very, very enthusiastic young coaches. This is Dwayne Woods on the sweep to the left. Woods gets very short yardage, dragged out of bounds by number 58, Jim Kramer, and number 80, Ed Wilamowski, the defensive end on that side. The gain is out to the 39-yard line. It'll be third down and five yards to go for the Mountaineers from their own 39. Hello there. Hello, ladies. They're, they're keeping warm. Who is your Pitt Panther? Did you notice they all have these buttons that say my Pitt Panther is? It's third down and five. Kendra on the rollout. Throws the woods, almost intercepted by J.C. Wilson, number 21. It was intended for number 33, Steve Lewis. And so it'll be fourth and five. And again, West Virginia will have to kick it away. And there you see J.C. Wilson, the cornerback. He's another one of those guys I was just talking about with a good speed. 4'6 in the 40. Leroy Felder's about 4'6. Uh, Bob Jury, I think, is about a 4'7. And all of them seem to have very good instincts for the football. Jeff Betty back to punt for West Virginia. And again, 29. Willie Taylor, the deep receiver for Pitt. A line drive, low kick. Taken by the up back and fumbled. It's still live, and West Virginia appears to have covered the football at the 21-yard line of Pitt. Mountaineer fans are excited as the West Virginia players get their first break of the afternoon. They're so happy about it, they may injure one another. The line drive punt was taken by number 21, J.C. Wilson, the up back. J.C. Wilson uh, having a trouble getting his handle on the football. Boy, there's a big pile up. Who finally gets it, did you see? It looked to be Weppler of West Virginia who covered the football. Randy Weppler, the Mountaineers get a break and that's what they need first and 10. On the reverse, the flanker around. Manuel Rodriguez. Rodriguez stopped by Bob Jury in the secondary. Gets inside the 20 yard line at about the 17 of Pitt. Manuel Rodriguez, the backup to Cedric Thomas coming in. Oh, don't you love it when they start pulling out those gadget plays? Johnny Majors calls those cow pasture plays. <laughs> That's right. Here's one of those cow pasture plays. It's the end around. The fake is the, the option fake is to the right. The pitch goes to the wide receiver, Manuel uh, Rodriguez. On second down and five. 
It looked as if the ball might have popped loose, but West Virginia recovers the tackle made by Jim Kramer and Cecil Johnson. Walter Easley, as you can see with 318 yards on the year, picks up the first down at the 11-yard line of the Pitt Panthers. And the West Virginia fans have really come to life. The Pitt fans are yelling for defense. First and 10 from the Pitt 11. West Virginia getting a break on the fumbled punt. Again, it's easily up the middle. Crosses the 10 to about the 9-yard line, maybe to the 8. Arnie Weatherington, number 59, makes the tackle. Paul Lumley, number 35, is normally the starting fullback. Walter Easley, the freshman, doing a good job of filling in. Lumley, uh, the leading ball carrier on the team with over 400 yards. Easley got two on that play. It's second down and eight. Just inside the nine-yard line of the Mountaineers, or rather of the Panthers. Easley again. Down to the six-yard line. Kramer and Weatherington make the tackle, the two linebackers for Pitt. Third down in what looks like a passing situation. Now, one of the plays they had li have liked down here is to fake the veer option and go to their crossing pattern in which they, uh, they get the crisscross between Steve Lewis and the tight end. A critical situation now. It is third down and a, about six yards to go. West Virginia can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. As the first down marker is just inside the one. Dan Kendra. On third and six, watch the throw over the middle, incomplete, intended in the end zone for number 83, Ben McDay, the tight end. Jeff Delaney, number 14, was defending and may have gotten a hand on the ball for Pitt. Fourth and six now from the seven-yard line, and apparently we're going to have a field goal attempt. Tonight, ABC Sports will present a special two-hour primetime special, The Battle of the Network Stars. Tonight, nearly $400,000 on the line as teams from all three networks, consisting of five men and three women. Tonight at 9 on ABC. Bill McKenzie's field goal attempt is good. And so West Virginia capitalizes on the fumbled punt and gets on the board with a field goal from Bill McKenzie, the fellow who beat Pitt last year. He was a walk-on. 7-3 Pittsburgh. We have just 50 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. Pitt Panthers will go back on offense now. West Virginia, in talking to Coach Frank Signetti Cupper earlier in the week, he said that that's what they were going to have to have. They're going to have to get some turnovers from Pitt, get some breaks in the game if they're going to keep it close and stay with them and have any chance for what they certainly want to be an upset. He also stressed the importance of this first quarter, of taking it to Pittsburgh in the first quarter. I want to tell you once again about what's coming up tonight at 9, a special sports presentation, Battle of the Network Stars. Some of the contestants for ABC will include Ron Howard of Happy Days and Gabe Kaplan of Welcome Back, Cotter. CBS will field among other stars, Telly Savalas, Sonny Bodo, and Jimmy J.J. Walker. The memorable show you won't want to miss it, the Battle of the Network Stars. Something for fun tonight at 9 Eastern Time over most of these ABC stations. With just 50 seconds left to go, McKenzie kicks off, taken by the upback. Tom Sindewald, number 46, across the 30-yard line. Sindewald is injured or probably would have been playing today in place of Bobby Hutton at fullback. The Panthers with pretty good field position. They go on offense first and 10 at their own 31 on the short kick by McKenzie. The Mountaineers on defense. They've had some problems with injuries, and they're a little thin, but they're a scrappy bunch. And they're here to give Pitt everything they can. Kavanaugh on the option, crosses the 35. Kavanaugh across the 40, the 45, and run out of bounds just short of the 50-yard line by Paul Jordan, number 47, the free safety. Matt Kavanaugh has really come into his own in the last two seasons. He shared the duty last year with Bobby Haygood, and Haygood got injured early this season, and Kavanaugh has really come on. Bobby was with us yesterday in the film festival. He was there uh, on crutches still. Kavanaugh gives them a first down at their own 48-yard line. The Panthers leading 7-3 to near the end of the first quarter. Dorset 
The Hawk crosses the 50, run out of bounds at about the 47-yard line of West Virginia. 22, Tom Pridemore, the strong safety, makes the play. Why do they call him Hawk? It, as I understand it, his father gave him his nickname originally. There you see Dorsett's 39 yards so far today. He can see so well, even as a youngster, that his father called him Hawkeye. And he sees so much on a football field when he's carrying the football, they just call him the Hawk. He also flies like a Hawk when he gets moving. He has tremendous peripheral vision and great eyesight. Bobby Hutton near the 45-yard line of West Virginia. 51, Fran Gleason, the defensive end, a junior at 6'3 and 210, along with Norm Patterson, number 91, make the tackle. Bobby Hutton, a very, very steady performer. He plays fullback and tailback for the Panthers. Filling in, of course, for Elliott Walker, who is the second most prolific ground gainer in Pitt's history, right behind Tony Dorsett. Had he not played in the shadow of Dorsett, he might be a superstar. It is third down and two. The Panthers operating from the West Virginia 45-yard line. That's the end of the first quarter as time runs out with the Pitt Panthers leading 7-3 over the West Virginia Mountaineers. We'll return to Pitt Stadium in just a moment. They're getting ready to start the second quarter. Steve Zabriskie along with Lee Grosskopf from Pitt Stadium. And a backyard brawl is underway with the Pitt Panthers leading 7-3. They have a first and 10 at the West Virginia 45-yard line, and they have enjoyed excellent field position so far. It is third down and three yards to go for Pitt. The fake to Hutton. Kavanaugh on the option. Cuts inside. Crosses the 40. The 30. Kavanaugh down near the 25-yard line. The tackle made by number 13, Johnny Shell, in the West Virginia secondary. Kavanaugh was known early in his career as a passer and not so much of a runner. Cover, he's really come on as a rusher. I really like the way he runs the football, and watching him in the highlights film yesterday and some of the things, uh, I noticed that he's running, but he's a very smart runner. Uh, he uses his blockers very well. He knows how to make the right cut. He doesn't have the blinding speed. He doesn't have the speed that, say, a Bobby Haygood has, but he's a, a very smart runner. First and 10, Panthers. Dorset dives over the middle, gets down near the 20-yard line. Number 65, Joe Jellick, the middle guard, and number 78, Chuck Smith, the defensive tackle, makes the play on Dorset. So far, West Virginia's done a pretty good job of bottling up Tony, but they really haven't given him the ball a great deal so far. Been used sparingly. That's one of the things that uh, Dorset said he likes, is the, the return of Kavanaugh gives the offense a lot more balance. He may not have to carry as much, but it might give him the chance to pop a long one somewhere along the line. Gain of four on the play. It is second down and six now from the 21-yard line. Counter option, Kavanaugh keeping. Kavanaugh's at the 15, down to the 14-yard line. The play made by 47, Paul Jordan, the senior free safety for West Virginia. He jammed his hand when he went down, Cupper. I don't know whether he hurt his wrist or what. That might affect his passing. You can see him shaking it a little bit there and looking over to the bench. Tommy Usyk, start warming up your arm. Kavanaugh from Youngstown, Ohio. Kavanaugh now uh, four rushes, 52 yards, and he's gone upstairs uh, successfully also. It's another first down for the Panthers, first and 10 from the 14-yard line, Dorset. Inside the 10 to about the 9-yard line. The Hawk just keeps nipping away at you. Chuck Smith makes the tackle. Usyk is an interesting story, Cupper. You mentioned him in case Kavanaugh was to come out of the ball game. There he is, number 13. He was a six-team quarterback. Wasn't even on scholarship. A walk-on player. They went to him early in this season when both Haygood and Kavanaugh were injured. They went away from the passing game a little bit and relied on Dorsett a lot, and he brought him through with three wins, did a super job. Of course, his uncle's the old Michigan State quarterback. Second down and five. Bobby Hutton straight up the middle near the five-yard line. The Panthers keep chipping away at a tough and scrappy West Virginia defense. Norm Patterson, number 91, makes the tackle. Very close to first down yardage. It'll be third down and about a yard to go at the five-yard line for Pitt. Third and short yardage. They've kind of liked that uh, lead option down in here quite a bit of the time. Of course, when they line up in the eye, you kind of get a sense that maybe they're going to get the ball to their tailback. And they do. The power play with Dorsett straight up the middle, close to the goal line, stops at about the two-yard line. Paul Jordan, 47, up from the secondary to meet Dorsett, along with Tom Pridemore, the monster man. It's a first and goal now for the Panthers at the two. 
One of the many interesting things about Tony Dorsett is that he has grown a lot physically since he first came here as a freshman. I think he checked in about 155 pounds. Let's watch him. You see, he has the physical strength now. He's weighing in about 185 to 190 pounds, and uh, uh, he's really beefed up since his freshman year. He can still fly. He says the heavier and stronger he gets, the faster he gets. It's first and goal from the two-yard line of West Virginia for the Pitt Panthers. They lead 7-3 here in the second quarter. Dorsett goes to the goal line. Touchdown, Pitt. Dorsett with that extra second effort. And you see the Pitt student section there. They love it. And the Panthers go out in front 13-3. Another touchdown for Tony Dorsett. Down number 18 for Mr. TD. 11 carries, 53 yards already. Dorsett is a man that makes them go. 53 yards and 11 carries, as Cupper said. Two TDs today. Carson Long out of Larry Swider's hold. His 38th consecutive extra point. And the Pitt Panthers go out in front with 12-32. Left to play in the first half, 14-3. We're going to be joined now by the people who've been watching the Notre Dame-Alabama game. We asked you in the Mid-Atlantic States to stay with us. Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Zabriskie, and we welcome you viewers who've been enjoying the Alabama-Notre Dame game in South Bend. With me is Lee Grosskopf, and we're here in Pitt Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where the Pitt Panthers have now taken a 14-3 lead over West Virginia on this touchdown by Tony Dorsett. From his tailback position, one of his favorite plays, the isolation, Tony Dorsett gets touchdown number two. He's now got 11 carries, 53 yards. Just another typical day for Tony Dorsett. Let's go back now to Chris Schinkel and Bud Wilkinson in South Bend, Indiana. Carson Long again getting ready to kick off. And the Pitt Panthers have been pretty much in control of this game. One of the key things I think so far, Cupper, has been field position. Pitt has enjoyed, except for the double punt, exceptional field position. West Virginia has not. Carson set to kick off. Back deep to receive again. Lee Dowell, number 40. Dwayne Woods, 44. Along with number 32, Dave Riley for West Virginia. Dowell out to the 20-yard line. Maybe does get across the 20-yard line. I think that's an important point you just made. One of the real subtle things about this Pittsburgh team is their kicking game and the way it has influenced field position for the last few years with Carson Long and, uh, and Larry Swider. They call him Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. <laughs> Swider is Butch. And Carson is Sundance. And uh, Swider holds for Carson Long. They're kicking bloodies. And they have really done a job. First and 10, West Virginia from their own 20. The pitch easily around the right side up near the 25-yard line. J.C. Wilson and Ed Wilimowski make the tackle for Pitt. One of the reasons that uh, Easley did not gain more on that might have been a missed assignment, Cupper. Sometimes these wide receivers are a little reluctant to really stick their noses in there to uh, get a, a good piece of the man's chest. And, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe he's saving himself <laughs> for the bomb later. <laughs> I think Ed Wilimowski had him outweighed a little bit. Second down and five. Kendra dropped for a loss. The ball is loose inside the 20-yard line. I believe West Virginia has recovered, however. Al Romano, number 91, their Outland Trophy candidate and All-American nose guard, came in to make the hit on Kendra, hit him from the blind side, and the ball popped out. West Virginia maintains possession, however. And we may have a penalty. I think we do. A defensive holding penalty, the second one of the afternoon against the Pitt Panthers. Holding on the defense is a call cover you don't see very often. We've seen it twice already here in the first half. There you see what might be <laughs> J.C. Wilson and Steve Lewis uh, going at it. I think that's self-explanatory. I don't think I have to even comment on that picture. Well, I think the penalty might have been justified. It gives... Uh, the West Virginia Mountaineers a first down at their own 32-yard line. And that's a break because it would have been third and very long yardage back inside their own 20. First and 10 for the Mountaineers. 
at their own 32. Kendra trying to get some offense consistency going here. Cedric Thomas in motion on the sprint out. Can't find anybody open at the 35 and runs out of bounds wisely at about the 38-yard line. Cecil Johnson, the senior defensive end for Pitt, was chasing him out. Discretion is the better part of what? Sports quiz. <laughs> better part of intelligence, really, I think. <laughs> He'll last a long time if he keeps doing that sort of thing, along with the old Fran Tarkington slide. You know, when you see those linebackers coming, you just do a little slide. Duck under the clothesline. He did a good job. He picked up about six yards. It is second down and four from the 38. The pitch to Woods. Woods crosses the 40-yard line. Good power running as he broke a tackle. He was hit by Ed Wilamowski, number 80, and then drove forward for some extra yardage and got up around the 43-yard line of West Virginia. It's enough. For a Mountaineer first down, Dwayne Woods, number 44. Dwayne Woods, just to amplify him, he was the second leading ball carrier on the team last year with over 400 yards. They look for him to be uh, the leading ball carrier this year. He really hasn't had the kind of year that they expected. Last Wednesday, I was down at West Virginia. I saw him in the weight room, and he, although he's pretty small, is an extremely muscular and strong fellow. First and 10, West Virginia, from their own 44. Kendra on a quarterback draw. He's trapped behind the line of scrimmage and dropped for a loss. In there very quickly, Randy Holloway, number 70, the defensive tackle who relies very, very heavily on his quickness. Al Romano, number 91, has gone out of the game with an injury. Al Romano gets more of the ink, but watch this big Randy Holloway. I'll tell you, we talked to him yesterday. He's got 61 tackles. He's one of the more underrated linemen, really, along with uh, uh, Cecil Johnson. It's a loss of five on the play. It's second down and 15. From the West Virginia 39-yard line, Rodriguez in motion. The draw play. Easily, maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Jim Kramer, the linebacker, number 58, played it very well and made the first contact. Here's what the Pitt defense has done, Cover. That is something I was just about to make a comment on. You know, one of the things West Virginia wanted to do was to come out and be able to establish a running game, but they are just running into a big physical defensive wall by Pitt. Loss of perhaps a half a yard on the play. It's still third down and 15, and Kendra wants to put it up. Pressure from Romano, and he's caught from behind. Back around the 30-yard line, Al Romano with his second sack of the game on West Virginia quarterback Dan Kendra. Al Romano, the senior Outland Trophy candidate winner, 6'3", 230 pounds. What's really remarkable about that is the fact that he runs the 40-yard dash in 4.8. Footy back to punt for West Virginia. Jay, or rather, Willie Taylor, the deep receiver, back around his own 35-yard line for fit. High kick hanging up nicely. Willie Taylor at the 31 with a fair catch. The Pitt Panthers will go back on offense at their own 31-yard line. Nine minutes eight and eight seconds left to play in the first half. We'll be back in just a minute. There's Dorset's career stats right up to date, Cover. 5,722 yards as of right this minute, along with 52 touchdowns. Tony says he'd like to push it up to about 6,000 yards so that nobody would ever break the record in his lifetime. Well, West Virginia's doing everything they can to prevent him from doing that, and they've done a pretty good job of bottling him up. Here's Matt Cavanaugh. Remember earlier when he went down out of bounds, we told you he looked like he was shaking his right wrist. We have a report now that he has a contusion or a bruise on his right elbow. It is not considered to be serious enough to keep him out of the game. However, he will continue to play, and you might be able to see there, Cupper, it looks swollen. You can actually see the swelling. I'd say during uh, between plays, he better get some ice on that. That is uh, obviously swollen. We'll have to wait and see how, if at all, it affects his passing. And they do rely on Kavanaugh's arm from time to time. We have nine minutes, eight seconds left to go in the first half. Tony Dorshit has scored two touchdowns. Bill McKenzie has kicked a field goal for West Virginia, and the Pitt Panthers lead 14 to 3. So far, I think some of the Pitt defense has been more dominating than their offense, even though they've scored 14 points. That's something that we talked about earlier, and I think we ought to continue to talk about it throughout the game, is because of uh, Dorsett's publicity, the, the defense has really been kind of overlooked at times. Coming up, remember, following this game as a part of our doubleheader, the national telecast of a very important Southwest Conference game from Little Rock, Arkansas, the Arkansas Razorbacks and the Texas A&M Aggies. That's at four following this game here on ABC. First down and 10, Panthers operating from their own 30, Dorset. 
to the outside. Tries to cut inside, gets back across the 35. 47, Paul Jordan, and 86, Buzzy Thornton, the defensive end for the Mountaineers, make the play on Dorset as he picks up about seven yards out to the 38-yard line. Here's a better look at one of Tony Dorsett's favorite plays. It's the power pitch with him in the tailback position out of the eye formation. And you get a sense once again of that incredible cutting ability, the way he can plant that right foot and just change directions while gliding along at nearly top speed. Second down and three, Kavanaugh on the option. Good defense by West Virginia. They took away the pitch man, Hutton, and they made the tackle on Kavanaugh with Culbertson, number 50, and 51, Fran Gleason, the defensive end on the right side, making the play. Boy, speaking of that uh, A&M uh, Arkansas game, what a matchup of those two running backs. We got uh, Ben Cowens, who's the leading uh, rusher in the Southwest Conference, going up against big old George Woodard of the Texas Aggies. Every Ballard's been waiting a few days for that rematch, you know? Kavanaugh may have lost just a little bit. It is still third down and three, however. Pitt operating from their own 37-yard line. Out of the eye formation, Kavanaugh fakes to Dorset. Kavanaugh wants to throw, now he's gonna run. Kavanaugh's got an open field. He's at the 45 to 50 into West Virginia territory at the 35-yard line. Down around the 33-yard line, Matt Kavanaugh scrambling for big yardage. Johnny Shell, number 13, finally brings him down in the West Virginia secondary. That's one of the nice advantages of having a Russian running quarterback when you've got a deep zone defense because once he gets uh, past these men up front, look at that, there's a fine move right there. He's got a lot of space now. And look at the downfield blocking once again. Dorsett could have gotten over there to get Johnny Shell. Kavanaugh might have gone all the way. Johnny Shell saves the day for West Virginia, and it gives the Panthers a first and 10 at the West Virginia 33-yard line. Kavanaugh has really, oh, somebody's down. A West Virginia player down on, it looks like the far sideline, just out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. We can't see who it is, however. I think it might have been the man who got blocked by the wide receiver. I think Gordon Jones really got a lick on somebody down there. The NJCAA, begun in 1937 with 13 junior colleges and one sport, greets the bicentennial year of 1976, now with 585 member colleges and 19 sports, 19 men's national championships, and 11 women's national championships. The NGC AA. While the West Virginia players being attended to, we'll remind you with seven and a half minutes to go here in the first half. This backyard brawl has pit out in front 14 to three on two Tony Dorsett touchdowns. West Virginia's score came on a Bill McKenzie field goal following Pitt's fumble of a punt. Paul Jordan, the defensive back, number 47, is the injured player. He was uh, downfield trying to make the tackle on Matt Kavanaugh when he got a real surprise shot, I think, from, I believe it was uh, Jones who had nailed him from his wide receiver spot. Jordan is an important player. Their free safety is senior at 6 feet and 185 pounds, and we certainly hope he's all right. On first and 10 for the Panthers from the Mountaineer 33-yard line. Kavanaugh out of the I formation to pitch back to Dorset. Dorset trying to get around the outside, and there's a lot of white-shooted Mountaineers there. Tony will lose about a yard. 22, Tom Pridemore, the strong safety, is the first player to get to him. We want to remind you that coming up at halftime today, we'll have a Fireman's Fund flashback. It'll feature a look at last week's two big upsets in NCAA football. Purdue's win over Michigan, and the Georgia Tech Notre Dame upset. That's the Fireman's Fund flashback today at halftime here on College Football on ABC. Loss of one, second down and 11 now from the 34-yard line of West Virginia. Option pass, Kavanaugh looking over the middle, overthrown, intended in the end zone for Jordan Jones, number 24, or Willie Taylor, 29, as they were converging. Tom Pridemore, number 22, and 43, Greg Anderson, were back defending. That's called, everybody go deep, I'll find you. That's one of those old cow pasture plays. This is a series that uh, Pitt put in, as a matter of fact, during the Duke game to take a little pressure off of their option game. They start out looking like the option, and then Kavanaugh drops back and throws the pass. Kavanaugh that day threw five touchdown passes to tie a record, and most of it was because of plays like that. This time it didn't work, however. It is third and 11 from the 34-yard line of West Virginia. Kavanaugh on the straight drop back pressure and he's dropped fumbles the football West Virginia may have recovered we'll see 
Chuck Smith, number 78, one of the top defensive players for West Virginia with the pressure on Kavanaugh. Pitt has it. Nonetheless, it'll be fourth down and a mile and a half to go as it's back at about the 45-yard line of West Virginia, near the 44, and Larry Swider is on to punt. Chuck Smith's known as Snuffy. Snuffy <laughs> Smith right out of the mountains of West Virginia. Tom Pridemore back deep to receive, lets it go, bounces into the end zone as it landed on the five or six yard line. And so West Virginia will be back to take on offense at the 20 yard line. We'll be back in just a minute. If you think this game is good, wait till you see what's coming up next on ABC with Arkansas and Texas A&M at four o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Hawk. The Hawk wants to be a TV announcer, by the way. What's this Tony Dorsett? <laughs> Tony <laughs> Dorsett. He's a French mole. No? That should be a great game, though. Four o'clock, following regional telecasts such as this one, a national game between Texas A&M and Arkansas, a most important Southwest Conference game. Here we have 6.08 to go in the first half. West Virginia, first and 10 from their own 20. Easily the ball carrier, fighting for yardage. 70, Randy Holloway making the tackle for Pitt. Paul Lumley now in the game in place of Easley. We did not expect to see Lumley. He was on crutches as late as Wednesday this week. He gained two, however. It'll be second down and eight. Lumley's their leading ball carrier cup. It's kind of a surprise. We knew that he was dressed out, but we weren't sure that he would play today. And uh, could he be all right? That could help him a lot. Second down and eight from the 22-yard line. Rodriguez in motion to the top of your screen. Kendra wants to throw. Intended for Lewis. It's overthrown. Lewis took a shot from Bob Jury, number 31. The pass ball is incomplete, however. It'll be third down and eight from the 22. This program is being brought to you as a special exclusive of ABC Sports. Now let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. This is WTAE-TV, Channel 4, Pittsburgh. West Virginia out on offense with third down and eight operating from their own 22-yard line. Kendra Fakes dropping straight back, has plenty of time. The pass intended over here in the near side for number 83, the tight end, Benny McDay, Bob Jury, number 31, defending on the play for Pitt. And so the West Virginia Mountaineers will again have to punt it away. That's one of the plays that's been very effective for the Mountaineers this year. And as you and I were looking at films yesterday, the, the Pittsburgh coaching staff commented on that, and it was something that they were concerned about. Uh, they've had very good luck with crossing pattern off the of, uh, out of play pass action. Jeff Fetty will kick it away from about his own 10-yard line. Willie Taylor back deep for Pitt, and the pressure is on. Fetty with a nice move finally gets it away, and they're going to let it bounce down around the 40-yard line, the 35-yard line of Pitt. And it's going to be down inside the 35 at about the 33-yard line. 5.15 left to play in the first half. Pitt leading West Virginia, 14-3. Dorsett just had to put on a new jersey cover. He's, uh, he goes through more jerseys probably than any other player in college football. Uh, he tears away, and he has a few jerseys torn away, too. Tony Dorsett, <laughs> our, our new Pro Bowl reader. <laughs> No, Tony's serious. He wants to be a television sports guest, but I think he may spend a few years in pro football before he gets to that career. <laughs> it is first and ten for the Pitt Panthers. They are on offense operating from their own 34-yard line. Kavanaugh to throw. Kavanaugh to Corbett, the tight end. Run out of bounds at about the 43-yard line by number one, left cornerback Harold Woods of West Virginia. Jim Corbett, the leading receiver for the Pitt Panthers, gives them not quite enough yardage for the first down as they mark it at the 43-yard line. It'll be second down and about one. Speaking of crossing patterns, we said that West Virginia has had good luck with them. Jim Corbett has been very successful uh, coming underneath on the crossing pattern. Came into today's game with 26 catches. He's added two more so far. Corbett from Erie, Pennsylvania. Second down and one for the Panthers from their own 43. Dorsett, first down, out near the 50-yard line. Stopped at about the 49-yard line. Harold Woods, number one, up from the secondary, along with right side linebacker, number 55, Jeff Massarelli, a 6-foot, 210-pound sophomore. Another one of the favorite plays out of the I formation uh, for the tailback is the sprint draw. Let's watch Tony Dorsett as he kind of takes a little jab step to his right. Uh, Kavanaugh starts sprinting to his right, and then he just slips the ball to Dorsett. The sprint draw, the isolation play, and the power sweep are the three favorites. First and 10 Panthers from their own 49, and Kavanaugh goes nowhere. Good defensive reaction by West Virginia. Fran Gleason, the defensive end with a fine play, as he's being congratulated by his teammates, number 51. 
along with Joe Jellick, number 65, who slid over to help out. A loss of, well, right at the line of scrimmage, maybe he lost a few inches. It's second down and 10, still at the 49-yard line of the Pitt Panthers. Four minutes and 17 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Pitt leading 14 to three. Jordan Jones split to the right, Willie Taylor to the left, Kavanaugh drops straight back. Kavanaugh drops the football, it's loose. West Virginia has recovered. The Mountaineers get another break. 78, Chuck Smith in there to recover that football as the ball just dropped out of Kavanaugh's hand as he was trying to avoid the rush. And the Mountaineers are happy. That's one of the things you talked about earlier is that uh, West Virginia was hoping to get some turnovers. It was a turnover that set up their first three-pointer. Now they find themselves, as the clock starts ticking down to those final uh, minutes of the first half, with once again excellent field position. First and 10 from the Pittsburgh 43. Dan Kendra fakes the draw to Lumley, looking to pass. Pressure's on. He gets away from Romano. Incomplete and Jennifer Lundy intercepted by J.C. Wilson, number 21. The ball hit Lumley in the hands, and J.C. Wilson came up to pick it off at the, about the 20 or 30-yard line of Pitt. Back-to-back -back turnovers, and the Panthers will go back on offense. These are the kind of plays you look back on as the game mo uh, moves on and you think, well, this was really perhaps the turning point of the game. Uh, West Virginia with excellent field position. Here they have a man wide open. It's Lumley, the leading ball carrier. <laughs> and for obvious reasons, not the leading receiver. Who was, I think it was the late Paul Christman that used to say, hit him in a bad place. Right in the hand. And so Pitt gets a break and takes away a possible West Virginia scoring opportunity. First and 10 Panthers from their own 31. Jones and Taylor are both split to the right side. Screen to the flanker to Jones. Jones trying to find some running room. Just four or five yards. He can't get away from Tom Clydemore. However, the strong safety, number 22, one of West Virginia's top defensive people, makes a great play to keep that from being a big game. Out near the 35-yard line. Gain of about four on the play. It'll be second down and six. Of the 35. Gordon Jones, uh, I talked about him earlier. I'm going to amplify a little bit more. He's just an incredible uh, physical specimen, an all-around athlete uh, who has a vertical jump of 38 inches. He has a standing broad jump of over 11 feet. He's a game-breaking type, tremendous in the open field. High formation, pitch back to Dorset, running to the left. Dorset tripped up as he crosses the 40-yard line. A fine defensive effort by 65. Joe Jellick, the middle guard, or Dorset, might have gone at least another 10 or 15 yards. Joe Jellick, the middle guard, has been the busiest guy along the front wall. 89 tackles. Here he is. Boy, I'll tell you, that's a good effort. And it's not very often that you see TD go down just by one hand. Nobody was more surprised than Tony Dorsett. As he was starting a motor, he had really turned it on when he got to the corner. If Jellick hadn't got him, it was a lot of daylight. He did get enough for the first down, however, as you see, as he crossed the 40-yard line. The ball is at the Pittsburgh 41. And the Panthers will have a first and 10 from that point. Three minutes now remaining in the first half. Pitt still leading West Virginia 14 to three. And the Mountaineers have played a lot of defense, but they've been scrappy. Again, Jones and Taylor are both split to the right side. Pitch back to Dorset out of the I formation, running to the right. Same play to this side. Dorset at the 50, 45 yard line. Finally dragged out of bounds in West Virginia territory by number 50, Ken Culverson, the left side linebacker. It's enough for another pit first down, however, as Dorset takes it in to Mountaineer territory. And the Hawk keeps flying along, I tell you. That gives him uh, over 1,600 yards now. As we look at him, again, on one of his favorite plays. He, now, this is his 16th carry. It gives him 85 yards for today. And, and once again, you get a sense of uh, the way he can change direction, the stopping and starting ability. Uh, he's just one of the most exceptional runners I've ever seen, if not the best. And one key to that was that Gordon Jones, the wide receiver, was blocking his man 15 yards downfield. The Panthers, as we said, have some of the greatest downfield blocking. They want to get that yardage for the Hawks. Now, I think the Panthers may have taken too much time as whistles blow. May have a yes, it is a delay of game call against the Pitt Panthers. And that'll cost them five yards. It'll make it first down and 15. Two minutes and 13 seconds now left in the first half. 14 to three, Pitt over West Virginia. 
And the cupper will leave us now as Lee Grosscup makes his way down to the field for some halftime interviews. We'll be talking to both coaches, and we'll have a special ceremony for you at halftime coming up involving the Hawk, Tony Dorsett. First down at 15. Now the ball back at the 48-yard line of West Virginia. Option left. Kavanaugh keeping. Now pitches to Dorsett. Cutting inside at the 40-yard line. Dorsett picking up eight or nine yards. 43, Greg Anderson, the free safety, a senior at 190, makes the hit on Dorsett in the West Virginia secondary. <laughs> Tony Dorsett going for that magic 6,000-yard mark, something that he'll have to really do or have to really hustle to accomplish and something that could make the record untouchable. Here it is again. Dorsett waiting and Kavanaugh doing a nice job waiting till the last moment and Dorsett getting everything he can out of it as West Virginia played it very well. Second down and eight. Kavanaugh rolling out. Pass to Hutton. Hutton with a great defensive play hit by Harold Woods immediately at the 45-yard line and knocked back. Hutton getting up kind of slowly as Woods put a great hit on him and now Pitt has called timeout with one minute and 12 seconds left to play in the first half. There you see Bobby Hutton. Very steady, very versatile performer for the Pitt Panthers. Fills in for Dorsett, sometimes a tailback. He's filling in today for Elliot Walker, who's injured at fullback. Just a reminder to join host Bill Fleming for College Football 76 tomorrow and every Sunday afternoon throughout the season as highlights of today's key NCAA football games from around the country are analyzed. Panthers ready to go back on offense now. It'll be third down and four yards to go. The ball just inside the West Virginia 37-yard line. Taylor and Jones split to the left. Jones in the slot. Taylor, the wide receiver. Eye formation in the backfield. Pitch to Dorsett, running left. Great defensive play. Breaking through number 43, Greg Anderson, to drop Dorsett for a loss. And that's the way you've got to play the option play. The power sweep, student body left. Anderson, number 43, as you look at him there, the free safety. A senior at six feet and 190. Here it is again. Everybody to the right looks like the old USC O.J. Simpson student body left. And Anderson goes right through the block of Bobby Hutton to make the tackle. A great defensive play. The loss is back to the 41-yard line of West Virginia. And it is now fourth down and eight. Kavanaugh has found out what he wants to know. We have 47 seconds left to go in the first half. Pitt leading 14 to three. It is fourth down and eight. The ball at the West Virginia 41-yard line. Taylor to the right, Jones to the left, split backs in the backfield, fake the draw, Kavanaugh looking for a receiver, getting away from the pressure, now throws, complete to Corbin, he's hit, the ball is loose. At about the 40-yard line, it appears as if West Virginia has recovered, they have. Number one, Harold Woods made the hit on tight end Jim Corbett, who had made the reception, and Corbett is down on the ground. As you see there, pit trainer Tim Karen assisting him. He really took a hit from Harold Woods. Woods, the cornerback, is only 5'10 and 185, but boy, he has really put some hit on some pit receivers today. Kavanaugh, here you see it again, getting away from the pressure, flipping the ball to Corbett, who was covered by Anderson, and here comes number one, Woods. Boom! And the ball pops out. I think Woods' helmet hit it, but that's the least of Jim Corbett's worries right now. Corbett, there you see him still down and motionless and being attended to. We now have 36 seconds left to go in the half. Nearly a full minute. West Virginia took over on the fumble recovery, and they have a first and 10 at the pit 40-yard line, or rather their own 40. Dwayne Woods gets back to about the line of scrimmage. Randy Holloway with the pressure. And we'll go back now to Chris Schenkel in South Bend. There you see Corbin walking off the field at halftime as the clock now running down with 20 seconds left to play in the half. We'll try and find out for you the nature of Corbett's injury, and as we mentioned, he could be a very key loss to the Pitt Panthers being their leading receiver. Mountaineers are letting the clock run down now as we have seven, six, and the crowd starts to count now. Now a timeout is called by West Virginia with just five seconds to go. If they were going to run a play, I can't understand why they would call a timeout letting the time run down that low. This should be the last play of the first half. Kendra dropping back. The clock continues to run with five seconds. The pass is overthrown, almost picked off by Pitt. The ball falls incomplete at the Pitt 25-yard line as the clock runs out. And so both teams leave the field at the end of the first half to the tumultuous roar of an overflow crowd here in Pitt Stadium. The end of the first half with the Pitt Panthers leading the West Virginia Mountaineers 14 to 3. And PA announcer, announcer Roger Houston. Palmy Day in Georgia. The total that afternoon was a modest 101 yards. 
but a new era in pit football was born. Two weeks later, all of college football was asking about a young 160-pound pit freshman running back who shocked the nation's fans by rushing for 265 yards. Who was this freshman phenom? His name, of course, was Anthony Drew Dorsett. And today, three years and some 5,000 yards later, there isn't a football fan in America who doesn't know about Tony Dorsett. He holds nine all-time NCAA records, 27 all-time pit marks, and repeat his statistical accomplishments would only serve as an injustice to his larger meaning to college football, and pit football in particular. They began playing football at Pitt 86 years ago in 1890. And although Pitt has one of the most storied names in all of college football, the university has never chosen to retire the number of one of its players. But that ends today. The number 33 will never again be worn in this stadium by a Pitt football player. Your jersey, Tony, and the shoes you wore in the Navy game when you became the leading all-time NCAA runner will be permanently ensconced in the trophy case in the athletic department. No Pitt player will ever again wear number 33 because there never again will be another Tony Dorsett. You, Tony, are the greatest runner the game of college football has ever seen. And we thank you for letting us be a part of it. Thanks, Hawk. Thanks for the memories. playing a Broadway medley. Give my regards to Broadway, a very familiar tune. American music has gone through a lot of crazes and a lot of fads, and that's what the Pit Band is doing in their performance today with top hat, white tie, and tails, and a Broadway melody. Yankee Doodle, Yankee Doodle Dandy, the Pit Band performing one of the great George M. Cohan tunes. Water polo is number one. I guess that's what H2O means there on the banner. <laughs> they got all kinds of sports in colleges. We're about ready to kick off for the second half. West Virginia will be kicking off. Jeff Fetty, number 10. Bill McKenzie, number 33, set to kick off. Back deep to receive for the Pitt Panthers. 29, Willie Taylor. Number 19, Bob Rudishan. It's a short kickoff. Up around the 30-yard line. Now let's meet the Pitt Panthers as they introduce themselves to you here on ABC. Matt Kavanaugh, quarterback, Youngstown, Ohio. Tony Dorsett, running back from Malacopa, Pennsylvania. Bob Hutton, Marwa, New Jersey, running back. Willie Taylor, wide receiver, Ron in New Jersey. Gordon Jones, wide receiver, North Facels, PA. Jim Corbett, tight end, Erie, Pennsylvania. Corbett is all right. He just had the wind knocked out of him. He's back in a football game, first and 10. Kavanaugh on a keeper. Kavanaugh crosses the 45, crosses the 50-yard line, gets into West Virginia territory. He turned that one up very quickly as he just half-faked the pitch almost and moved it right up the field. 
Uh, I'll tell you, Matt Cavanaugh is having a terrific day as we look at him once again on what's been his biggest play, the option play. He, he faked the pitch. Actually, it looked like it was going to be part three of the triple option. He faked the pitch, and he turned up field. He had a, a terrific first half. Uh, nine carries, 65 yards in the rushing department, and he was 7-11 in the passing department for 41 yards. The ball is just across the 50-yard line in West Virginia territory. It's another first down for the Panthers, and again, it's Cavanaugh on the option. Cavanaugh down to the 40-yard line, pushed out of bounds across the 40 by number 47, Paul Jordan, the free safety who was also injured in the first half, and he's okay back in. Cavanaugh keeps doing it. They're trying to take Dorset and the pitch away from the Panthers, and Cavanaugh is taking advantage of it by running the football himself. There he is, the junior from Youngstown, Ohio, who has made a big difference to the Pitt football fortunes after the injury to number one quarterback Robert Haygood. Robert Haygood, of course, and Kavanaugh split duty. And in the Georgia Tech game this year, Haygood was injured, had a knee operation, and was out for the season. It's been on Kavanaugh's shoulders, but he too was injured for a part of the year, and he's done magnificently. Dorset up the middle for short guard. He's 78 Chuck Smith on the tackle for West Virginia. The ball short of the 35-yard line at the 36. A gain of two or three yards on the play. We'll call it second down and seven. Which kind of points out that depth has been a very important thing uh, for Pittsburgh. And I think if there's one factor in this game today, you'd have to say that, that Pittsburgh's just a lot deeper than West Virginia. Depth has been a question mark right along. Kavanaugh brings them out. Second down and eight from the 36-yard line of West Virginia. The Panthers on offense just underway here in the second half. 14-3 Pittsburgh. Kavanaugh again options up. Crosses the 30 to about the 28-yard line. The tackle made by number 65, Joe Jellick, and the left linebacker, number 50, Ken Culbertson, the senior 210-pounder for the Mountaineers. Here it is again, Copper. Oh, I'll tell you, he's having some fun running this option play today. I used to run that option play quite a bit myself at the <laughs> University of Utah. You know, we had the triple option, but what I did is that I eliminated part two. I just, I just went from part one to part three. There you go. You get the picture. The only you? time you ran was out of bounds. <laughs> and out of sheer fright. <laughs> Just, just short of the first down yardage. As they indicate just inches short. The ball inside the 30-yard line near the 27-yard line or 28-yard line, it is, of the West Virginia Mountaineers. 13 minutes, 26 seconds remaining in the third quarter. You know, back Jones comes out, excuse me, and Randy Rudishan comes in at wide receiver. Back in those days, the quarterback had to play safety on defense. And uh, Jack Curtis used to tell me, he said, Cupper, you line up 15 yards deep and retreat at the snap of the ball. <laughs> it is third down and just inches to go for a Panther touchdown. Kavanaugh trying to sneak it over the middle. Yardage for Dorson, and they've gotten a lot of it for Kavanaugh this afternoon. First and 10. They mark it at the 27-yard line of West Virginia. The Pitt Panthers on the move with their opening possession here in the second half. High formation in the backfield. Counter option. Kavanaugh to Dorset. Dorset at the 20-yard line. Dorset down inside the 20, near the 15. Bumped out of bounds by Johnny Shell, number 13, the senior right side cornerback. At 5'11", 180 pounds, he and Dorset are about an even match physically. I'll tell you, when he accelerates, you really get a sense of that 4'3.5 speed. That time when he caught that ball, he just gave it a little burst. Tony Dorset has now gone over the 100-yard mark this afternoon. He has about 102 yards, I believe, so far today. And it is another Panther first down. The ball is spotted at the 17-yard line of West Virginia. Willie Taylor and Gordon Jones both come split to the right. High formation, Hutton and Dorset in the tailback. Fake to Hutton, Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh's trapped. It's going to be thrown for a loss. Number 50, Ken Culbertson makes pressure along with 47, Paul Jordan. Also over there, 65, Joe Jellick, the middle guard. Good defense by West Virginia on that play. 18 straight 100-yard games now for Tony Dorsey. 20 carries, 102 yards, two touchdowns. It's just, you know, it's just another typical Tony Dorsett show. It would be a great day for any back yeah. if we had a minute left to go in the game, but we're just underway here in the third quarter, and Dorsett has passed the 100-yard mark. Again, Taylor and Jones come split wide to the right, split backs in the backfield with Dorsett on the wing to the right. It is second down and 11 yards to go from the 18-yard line. Kavanaugh rolling out away from the pressure, stops. Throwing into the end zone, it's underthrown. It bounces up and hits Willie Taylor. And Kavanaugh was leveled right after he threw the ball. Kavanaugh is still down. And so is the West Virginia defensive player who made the hit. 
try and pick up his number. I that's, believe it's 78. Chuck Smith, Snuffy Smith of West Virginia, their top defender is down, as you can see. And he appears to be in a great deal of pain. I'll tell you, either he's OD'd on Snuff or uh, Kavanaugh's got some very sharp elbows. Let's Here's see what happens here. Kavanaugh's winding up, and there's been a safety blitz on. I, I can't figure out why uh, Smith is the one that winds up holding himself. It looked as if Kavanaugh took the shot, and apparently Smith must have landed wrong, and they're working on, as you can see, his right knee. I always tell you, these quarterbacks are tough guys. You know, we got, we got just the calcified rib. There you see Chuck Smith being helped off the field, number 78 for West Virginia, their key defensive player. And we certainly hope that he is all right. This reminder to stay tuned at the conclusion of today's game for the Chevrolet offensive and defensive players of the game. We'll be announcing them, and the cupper will be voting in the booth as to whom you might select. Who are the well, front I'll tell you, right now the front runners offensively are obviously Tony Dorsett and Matt Cavanaugh for, uh, for Pittsburgh. And you know, defense is really kind of wide open. There have been some outstanding defensive plays and pretty steady defense on the part of uh, both teams. One thing that West Virginia has done, I think, cover, they've taken the big play away from Pittsburgh. Pitt has had to march on drives and chip away at 8 and 10-yard shots in order to uh, get their two touchdowns so far. That's a good point. They're threatening now with third down and 11 at the 18-yard line of West Virginia. Split backs in the backfield. Kavanaugh fakes. Looking to throw over the middle. Complete to Tim, Jim Corbett, number 81. Corbett. Down near the 10-yard line, run out of bounds just inside the 10 by number 13, Johnny Shell, who's been making a number of tackles in that West Virginia secondary. And to amplify on what you just said, uh, Tony Dorsett has gained over 100 yards, but his longest has been 17 yards. Matt Kavanaugh, uh, his longest is 29 yards. And they, they haven't allowed the bomb, so that's, that's an important point. Time of possession, however, has not been in West Virginia's favor, and now we're going to have a field goal attempt as we were short Carson Long is on, and it'll be fourth down and about three yards to go. Larry Swider is on to hold, and Carson Long now will attempt to stretch his all-time kick-scoring record in NCAA history. This attempt will be from the 17-yard uh, the line, a 27-yard field goal attempt. Straight up the middle, and Pitt goes out in front, 17-3 on a 27-yarder by Carson Long. Boy, that man is deadly, isn't he? You see that? Head down, swing through, keep your eye on the ball. Carson Long doing his job, and as we talked about, the hidden yardage, the kicking game. Pitt has an excellent kicking game with punter Larry Swider and place kicker Carson Long. He's full and really made their season. They're looking for an upset, of course, again here today, but they are trailing 17-3. They're getting ready to go back on offense now as Carson Long is set to kick off, teeing it up on the near hash mark. Back deep to receive for West Virginia, 40. Lee Dowell is the deep receiver along with Dwayne Woods and Dave Riley, number 32. Long's kickoff is short. Taken by the up back, Woods, out around the 12-yard line. He gets out to about the 25-yard line. And the Mountaineers will go on offense there. Let's meet West Virginia up close and personal. Dan Kendra, quarterback, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Dwayne Woods, running back, Bluefield, West Virginia. Walter Easley, running back, Charleston, West Virginia. Cedric Thomas, wide receiver, Alaco, Pennsylvania. Steve Lewis, Hurricane, West Virginia, wide receiver. There you have the Mountaineers, and they're playing the number one ranked Pitt Panthers, first and 10 from their own 21 yard line. Kendra to Woods, and Woods gets tripped up as he crosses the 25-yard line by Arnie Weatherington. Out around the 29-yard line. Short yardage on the play, a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Kind of nice meeting the guys up close and personal like that. I enjoyed meeting Dan Kendra. You know, he's a free-spirited type of guy. Drives a Jeep. Buried has a son. Let me, let me tell you more about that right after this play. On second down and seven, free-spirited Kendra to Easley. Easley crosses the 30-yard line to about the 32. Ed Wilamowski, the left side defensive end, slid off and made the play for the Panthers. Anyway, uh, Dan Kendra already is married, has a son, and his son, he says, he says for sure the guy is going to be a, a lineman because of the fact that he's already got a perfect four-point stance. <laughs> and you know they need some linemen at West Virginia. You got to walk. I mean, you got to crawl before you can run. I guess. Yep. It is third down and four now. West Virginia moving from their own 32. Kendra. Sprint out, intended for Woods, almost picked off by Leroy Felder, number 37. The ball was just a little bit out in front of Dwayne Woods, and Leroy Felder 
who made a key interception in the Notre Dame game earlier this year, returning it for a touchdown against the Irish, nearly had another one there because he had a clear field for about 35 yards if he could have picked that one off. Oh, I'll tell you, Dan Kendra, do not throw the swing pass into coverage like that. He's not going to be too happy when he sees that on film on Tuesday. And so, Fetty is on to punt. Standing at about his own 20-yard line, Willie Taylor back deep to receive for the Pitt Panthers. Nice punt. Taylor backs up and fair catches it at the 30-yard line. The Pitt Panthers will go back on offense, first and 10 from their own 30, with 10-26 left to go in the third quarter. Pitt leading 17-3. In the third quarter with the Cathedral of Learning just outside the Pitt Stadium walls and the sun shining brightly on the playing field. The Pitt Panthers are back on offense first and ten from their own 30-yard line. High formation with Dorset as the tail back behind Hutton. Dorset straight up the middle. About a yard is all as he gets to the 31-yard line. The play made by Chuck Smith, 78, who's back in there. And 55, Jeff Massarelli, the right side linebacker. The educational system in this country is the dominant factor in providing motivation, training, coaching, and facilities for sports and recreational pursuits. Over $2 billion is spent on facilities and annual operating funds. And that's one reason why the best athletic programs in the world come from NCAA members. Following the gain of one, second down and nine, perhaps a long eight for Dorset. Dorset on a pitch out of the I formation coming to the right side. Across the 35-yard line to the 37. Again, it was Chuck Smith, 78, who slid off and made the tackle. Short of first down yardage. They mark it out near the 38-yard line. The Panthers need to get to the 40 for a first down. It'll be third down and two. <laughs> There's Tearaway jersey number two. Uh, and we Number three, get number three ready for Tony. They spend about $500 a year on, Dor on Dorset's jerseys alone. But I'll tell you something, it's worth it. Because he certainly breaks a lot of tackles. I would say it probably is. Third and two out of the I formation from their own 38-yard line counter option. Kavanaugh keeping at the 40. Got the first down to the 50 into West Virginia territory at the 30, the 25, inside the 20-yard line, and finally run out of bounds by 13, Johnny Shell and 22, Tom White or the Monster Man. Matt Kavanaugh has been running that counter option with tremendous success this afternoon. And we may have a penalty marker down on the field. Oh, Kavanaugh stepped out of bounds. That's what it is. They say that Kavanaugh stepped out of bounds at the West Virginia 40-yard line, and they're bringing it back 20 yards back up field. Here it is again, Cupper. Let's look and see if somewhere along the line we can see his uh, right foot hit some chalk. Matt Kavanaugh is really doing a job today of running the option play and the counter option play. There it is right in there. Did you see it? Right foot hit the chalk. See it? There it is. If you hit any part of the white, you're out of bounds. 122 yards now and 13 carries for Kavanaugh. He's having an exceptional day. First and 10 Panthers from the West Virginia 40. Split backs in the backfield. The fake to Dorset. Kavanaugh looking to throw long. Gordon Jones is out there. He'll hang on to it at the goal line. Harold Woods, number one, the left cornerback, back defending. He was playing him all the way. And Gordon Jones nearly showed some of that acrobatic athletic skill, Cupper. Exactly. Gordon Jones, number 24, one of the more exciting players uh, in the East. Last year, one of the top return men in the country. He's been plagued by a little inconsistency with uh, with fumbling and uh, has dropped some of the easier ones. But I'll tell you, he's really an athlete, really an acrobat. You see that jumping ability right there. Harold Woods made a great play, knocking the ball away just sure as it got to Jones' hand. Saving the touchdown, it is now second down and 10, again from the West Virginia 40. I formation in the backfield. Jones splits to the right, Willie Taylor to the left. Kavanaugh trying to option, looking to throw. In trouble, caught from behind. The ball is loose, and it appears as if West Virginia has recovered. The Mountaineers have the football. Ken Culbert's at number 50, over there to make the play for the Mountaineers. Kavanaugh appeared to be a little indecisive on what he wanted to do, whether he wanted to pass, run, or pitch the ball to Dorset. And he finally dropped the ball on the ground. That's the second time that Matt has let the ball fall without being hit. That's called having too many options. They call it the triple option. That time it was a quadruple option. And the one they didn't want to option was the fumble. There you see the situation with 848. We're in the third quarter. West Virginia now with another break. They're on offense at their own 43. Kendra. Kendra running the counter option. He's caught and dropped right near the line of scrimmage. Jimbo Kramer, number 58. The senior at 6'2 and 220. The right side linebacker making the play for Pitt. You ran that option play about 10 billion times. Of course, you were, you were part one. You were the fullback in the Houston sphere. 
I want to just say, a, I'm going to come back to that, but I want to say a word about Johnny Major. Don't come back you don't want to come back to it? Johnny Major is quite a tailback at Tennessee, 1956. Second in Heisman uh, voting to Paul Hornung that year. Triple threader. Kendra on second and ten. Almost complete. It goes off the hands of the tight end, Ben McDay, number 83. Jeff Delaney might have had a chance for an interception, but couldn't come up with it. It goes as an incompletion, and it'll be third down and ten. The ball still at the West Virginia 43-yard line. John Majors uh, led his team to a 10-0 record in the Sugar Bowl that year. He was a triple threat tailback at Tennessee. I enjoyed watching him on those old Tell Ross slow motion plays. Remember those? <laughs> uh, are you too young for that? I, uh, I'd like to be. Majors <laughs> is uh, still in about as good a shape as he won when he played, I think. Kendra inside to Steve Lewis on the slant end pattern, crosses the 50 into pit territory. Close to first down yardage. They may be waiting for a measurement. It's at about, yes, it is, a West uh, Virginia first down. The ball at the 47-yard line of the Panthers and a big, big third down play. Dan Kendra to Steve Lewis. Their basic passing combination, and it worked for them that time. You know, this is a very, very important drive right now for West Virginia. They're trailing in the ball game 17-3, uh, to and they were about halfway through the third quarter as we look at Steve Lewis, far and away the leading receiver. That was a big third down play for Dan Kendra. Rodriguez split to the right, Lewis to the left. Dan Kendra on first and 10 from the pit, 47. Dwayne Woods, the ball carrier. He's hit immediately. Number 60, Cecil Johnson, the defensive end, and Arnie Weatherington, the linebacker on that side, met Woods right as he got to the line of scrimmage. He perhaps gained a yard on his forward progress. Down near the 46-yard line, that's where they mark it. It'll be second down and nine for the Mountaineers. Arnie Weatherington with 93 tackles. John Majors has said that pound for pound, this guy may be about as good as any linebacker he's ever seen. And they got another great one in James Kramer, who today is the leading tackler. Second down and nine. Kendra looking to throw. Rolling away from the pressure intended over the middle for number 33, Steve Lewis, to pass a little bit too high. Weatherington, along with 31, Bob Jury, back defending for Pitt. You're watching NCAA football here on ABC, and let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. This is WTAE TV, Channel 4, Pittsburgh. There you see the situation in the third quarter. 7.05 left to play, 17 to 3. The Pitt Panthers leading. West Virginia is on offense. And they will have a third down and nine from the Pitt 46 yard line. And they've called a timeout cover to try and figure out what they want to do. Third down and nine. Rodriguez in motion for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Kendra looking to throw. Good time. Over the middle, complete. Right at the 30 yard line. Steve Lewis, number 33, makes the reception. He's tackled immediately, but he's got enough yardage, much more than enough, for a Mountaineer first down. Jim Kramer, number 58, back to make the stop for Pitt. I think Kendra heard me. He did exactly what you told him to do. Well, when you got a, a, a receiver like Steve Lewis, that's a good thing to do with him. His favorite route has been the curl that you just saw him run. He also runs the outs very effectively. Intermediate patterns are his forte. West Virginia threatening first and 10 from the 29-yard line. Good hard running by Dwayne Woods moving around the left side. 31 Bob Jury and 58 Jimbo Kramer make the tackle. Easily, Walter Easley, number 46, the big freshman at 6'2 and 210 pounds, filling in for Paul Lumley, West Virginia's leading ball carrier, whom we've only seen cover on one series of downs today because of the injuries he suffered last week at Tulane. And they may be missing him today. They have not had a consistent running game. But I'll tell you, Walter Easley looked very impressive for a freshman. It is second down and five. Kendra up the middle easily again down to the 20 yard line. Short yardage as easily was tripped up right in the middle by Al Romano, number 91, the Outland Trophy candidate middle guard for the Panthers. There you see easily going back to the huddle, and here's a little look at Al Romano, number 91. I'll tell you, it's not hard to see why this is. Uh, this guy's considered one of the outstanding players in the country. Uh, he he takes the block on very well, stands up the center, and then he gets it on the tackle. Even though he didn't actually make the tackle, he didn't give any ground, and that's what enabled him to stop the play. Big play again for the Mountaineers. Third down and one. They're at the pit 19-yard line, easily over the right side, and it appears that he had enough for the first down yardage. Don Parrish, number 68, made the tackle, and it is a Mountaineer first down, and West Virginia is putting together their first consistent drive of the football game and threatening to score with five and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. There you see oh, the Mountaineer oh, mascot. Boy, he looks like he came right out of the hill, doesn't he? Almost oh, heaven. And he's, he's going to be excited if they can navigate the final 17 yards. First and 10. Kendra on the option play. 
Kendrick keeping at the 10-yard line. Inside the 10 and down near the 6 or 7. Danny Kendra taking a lesson from what Matt Cavanaugh has done for the Panthers. Ed Wilimowski makes the tackle for Pitt as they mark it at the six-yard line. It's another first down for the Mountaineers. First and goal at the Pitt six. Let's not forget we had one of the great upsets uh, of the entire history of the series last year. 17-14 in the final second, McKenzie's field goal. There you see Frank Signetti on the sideline, the West Virginia coach. This is his first year as head coach, and he'd like nothing more. Over the middle in the end zone, touchdown! No, he dropped the ball! Benny McDay, number 83, had the ball in his hand. Bob Jury defending on the play. The ball was tipped by a defender, and I think it changed the course of the ball enough to where McDay couldn't come up with it. West Virginia nearly had a touchdown. And remember, in college football, there are no rules against tipping. You know, you can have two, three people tip that ball. Two consecutive offensive receivers uh, can't have it. Actually, this was the linebacker that uh, tipped the ball, and uh, McDay uh, dropped the score. Jim Kramer making the play for Pitt, as you see there. The Panthers now have what they call their snake defense in. Jeff Delaney comes out, and Joe Stone, an extra defensive lineman, comes in for the pass rush. It's a timeout on the field, and we'll be back in just a moment. Pittsburgh leading 17-3. We have 4 minutes, 46 seconds left to go in the third quarter, and West Virginia is threatening to make the game even closer. I think it's a little closer cover than a lot of people thought it would be. But this is the backyard brawl, and the point spread and the records and what has happened before don't mean a whole lot. Second and goal from the six-yard line. Dan Kendra operating the West Virginia offense. Look at the throw. Pressure. Kendra drops for a loss by Randy Holloway, number 70, back around the 15-yard line. A big, big defensive play for the Pitt Panthers. All right, this is what's known as the Top Cat Award. When you get the when you start sacking the quarterback, they have a special award called the Top Cat Award, and uh, Holloway has been a guy who's gotten that consistently. 61 tackles prior to today's game for Randy Holloway. That could be one of the most important ones he's made. A very big play. It takes some of the pressure off the defense now as the ball is back around the 14-yard line. It is third down and goal from the 14. Kendra wants to throw. Kendra looking into the end zone for Lewis. Touchdown, West Virginia. Talk about a big play after the sack by Holloway. It was third and goal from the 14-yard line. And again, Cuffer, as they did earlier on the third down play, Kendra went to his bread and butter man, Steve Lewis, from Hurricane West Virginia. And a cute little round two, down into the corner. Sometimes called a big out. McKenzie on to attempt the extra point. It's good. And so, with four minutes and three seconds left in the third quarter, the West Virginia Mountaineers make their first consistent offensive drive of the afternoon to pull within seven points of the Pitt Panthers. I like Kendra's play calling on that drive. He used a lot of imagination. He mixed up his uh, running and his passing. He varied the protection. A uh, very smart drive by quarterback Dan Kendra. Bill McKenzie set the kick off for the Mountaineers. It's another squib kick. They try to pick it up at the 30-yard line. A couple of the up, up backs fumble the ball around, and finally a Pitt player falls on it. Tom Sindewall, number 46 for the Pitt Panthers, reserve fullback, who's been injured with his second kickoff recovery of the afternoon. So Pitt goes on offense again with pretty good field position at the 31-yard line, having a first and 10 with three minutes and 58 seconds left to go in the third quarter. It's 17 to 10. Pitt leading West Virginia, and the stands are really starting to come alive. And look who's in there at quarterback, number 13. Tommy Usyk in at quarterback. Maybe Kavanaugh's elbow is bothering him. Split backs in the backfield. Usyk to Dorset, straight up the middle. Dorset for short yardage, only a yard or two. And the Mountaineers are really fired up now. Ken Culbertson, number 50, makes the tackle on Dorset. And Usyk's history when he has been in there is to go to the I formation and take advantage more of Tony Dorset. This time he comes out with a veer. We'll try and get a word on just exactly why Kavanaugh is out of the football game. Gordon Jones comes split to the right, Willie Taylor to the left. Again, here's the I formation in the backfield with Dorset behind Hutton. Usyk on the sprint draw. 
Dorset up the middle across the 35-yard line. Again, short yardage, two or three more yards. And again, it's Ken Culbertson, number 50, along with number 51, Fran Gleason, who makes the tackle on TD. And that fellow named Momentum is wearing the white jerseys right now, partner. Third down and six yards to go. The ball at the pit 36-yard line. Again, it's Jones to the right and Taylor to the left. Split backs in the backfield. Music dropping straight back. Here's the Statue of Liberty play to Dorset. Gleason tries to get him. He's tripped up behind the line of scrimmage by Chuck Smith, number 78. The Statue of Liberty play that they used so well against Army last week. Dorset gained 10 yards twice on it. This time, West Virginia had a scouting report. They were looking for it. Fran Gleason, number 51, with great pressure. And then Snuffy Smith made the big play to drop Dorset for a loss at the 25-yard line. Larry Swider on to punt for the Panthers. Back deep to receive for West Virginia 30-43, Greg Anderson. Swider with a nice punt. It's going to be downed at the 26-yard line of West Virginia, and the Mountaineers will go back on offense with 2 minutes and 19 seconds left to play in the third quarter. A 48-yard punt by Larry Swider, who's been up in the top five punting statistics in the nation all year long. They needed that one right there. It's at the 26-yard line, and now the West Virginia Mountaineers will try to get their offense going again. And this is what I like to refer to as the VID. Do you know what a VID is? That's a very important drive. And uh, we got a big one coming up right now as we're nearing the end of the third quarter. Kendra to Easley, straight up the middle. Woods it is, Dwayne Woods, excuse me, stopped by 58, Jimbo Kramer. He crosses the 30-yard line. Good yardage on the play of about six yards. It'll be second down and four. We talked about the Top Cat Award. They've also got the Bad Cat Award. Do you know what the Bad Cat Award is for? I believe that's for the hardest hit. You do your homework, <laughs> partner. Nice going. Second down and four from the 32-yard line for West Virginia. Kendra on the counter option. Kendra out near the 35-yard line. Don Parrish, 68 and 91, Al Romano move over to make the tackle on Danny Kendra. Just across the 35 at the West Virginia 36-yard line, and it is going to be pretty close to a first down for the Mountaineers. They say it's not close enough for the measurement, and we'll call it third down and one officially. Another big play on third down. Kendra on the option. Pitching back. And it appears that Woods has enough yardage for the first down. We'll see where they give him his forward progress. Yes. There is some violent hitting going on on that field today. As you can tell by the number of players who've been knocked out just with the wind. Knocked out of them or have had their bell rung. Woods picks it up. More than the needed yard. Oh, this is indicative of the type of physical game that it has been as we see Leroy Felder, number 37, come up from his cornerback position and really stick it to Woods. Uh, the report on Kavanaugh is that he has left the field. He's in the locker room with that bruised elbow. On first and 10 from their own 38, Kendra rolling to the right side. Pass is complete. Out near the 50 yard line, Jeff Delaney on defense and again it was Steve Lewis who made the reception number 33 he has come up with some key receptions for West Virginia this afternoon Kendra really threading the needle once again to his favorite receiver Steve Lewis to update uh, Kavanaugh he had five stitches in his right elbow he came back at halftime but now he's left the field again he has returned to the locker room Rodriguez in motion on first and ten from the 49 yard line Kendra Watch the throw, plenty of time. Dropped by Rodriguez. Juggled it around for a while and couldn't hang on to it before the blue shirts got there. It's incomplete. Al Chesley and Arnie Wetherington over defending on the play. It'll be second down and 10 for West Virginia from their own 49. Oh, I like the way Dan Kendra is throwing the football right now. As we see, uh, Manuel Rodriguez is the man in motion coming from uh, right to left. He gets open just uh, on a sit-down pattern along the sideline. Again, hit him in a bad place. Used to call receivers like that boards. Just 22 seconds remaining in the third quarter. On third down and 10. Dwayne Wood straight up the middle for short yardage. Ed Wilomowski, number 80, and Arnie Wetherington, 59, making the defensive play for Pitt as the clock now runs down with just about nine seconds left to go in the third quarter. That probably is the last play of the quarter. With West Virginia now moving into Pitt territory at the 48-yard line. 
And there's the gun to end the third quarter of play here at Pitt Stadium. And the noise has not stopped since the beginning of the game, Cover. NCAA football will continue here on ABC following this message. Fourth quarter, there you see the situation. It is third down and eight for the West Virginia Mountaineers from the pit 48-yard line. Kendra wants to throw again. He has Easley out here on the flat. Easley's run out of bounds on a fine defensive play right about at the line of scrimmage. Perhaps he gained a yard. Al Chesley, number 55, a 6'3", 210-pound sophomore, made the play. The NCAA is an organization of over 800 members, which enforces a broad code of regulations, publishes playing rules and guidebooks, and conducts championship competition in 18 different sports. This year, for example, the NCAA will conduct 39 championships in those 18 sports for colleges of varying sizes. On fourth down, Willie Taylor does not call for the fair catch, and he's dropped immediately inside the 15-yard line. They'll mark it at the 13-yard line, and the Pitt Panthers will go on offense deep in their own territory. A fine punt by Jeff Fetty, the junior at 6-foot, 180-pounder, kicking the ball very well and putting the Panthers back on their own 13-yard line. We're just underway in the fourth quarter with 14.44 left to play in this game, and we have a ball game. Tom Usick is still in at quarterback for the injured Matt Cavanaugh. Out of the eye formation, first and 10 Panthers from their own 13, a pitch back to Dorset. Dorset cutting up field, gets out near the 20-yard line, gain of five to about the 18-yard line. Ken Culbertson, number 50, and number 86, Buzzy Thornton, the defensive end, make the tackle for West Virginia. We got Buzzy Smith and Buzzy Thornton in the West Virginia defense. Buzzy and Buzzy. I'll tell you, they are really getting their licks on Tony Dorsett right now. The Mountaineers just are doing a lot of swarming, a lot of gang tackling, and they're costing Tony Dorsett a lot of jerseys out there today, along with a few bumps and bruises. Gain of five and second down and five. Pitt operating from their own 18-yard line here in the fourth quarter. Again, Dorsett's coming to the left. Dorsett crosses the 20, gets out around the 23-yard line, close to the first down yardage. Number 13, Johnny Shell, the cornerback, coming up to make the hit on the Hawk. Tony Dorsett who is earning his yardage today the hard way in chunks of six, eight, five, ten yards at a time. He hasn't really broken a long run yet. You know, just an update as we uh, look at jersey number three coming up. Uh, we said in the pregame show that in some circles, West Virginia was a four-touchdown underdog today. They come in here with a, a lack of depth. Uh, Heavy underdog, but you know there's still a possibility of an upset, a heavy possibility right now. This time it's Dorset to the right on first and 10 from the 28 three-yard line. Dorset at the 30-yard line. Across the 30 to about the 31. Good defensive pursuit. Harold Woods, number one, along with number 78, Chuck Smith over there. And there you see what Dorset has done in his career to the minute, including that carry today. And he's carried the ball, as you can see, 1,023 times. And you have to add to that the number of times in practices and spring games. And he's already had a more career than a guy that's played 10 years. How many 100-yard games did you have at Houston? Oh, I started off slow, and then I tapered off. It is second <laughs> down and three. Bobby Hutton straight up the middle, close to the 35-yard line before he's pushed back, and very close to first down yardage. Hutton has not gotten much duty today as Kavanaugh and Dorsett have carried most of the load. And it is enough yardage for a Panther first down. Robin Mealy, number 82, and Harold Woods, number one, made the tackle for the Mountaineer defense. Tommy Usick does not throw the football as well as Matt Cavanaugh, but uh, he came in and he, he took charge uh, with a lot of leadership ability. And what he, he really did is he provided the opportunity for Tony Dorsett to carry the football more, particularly out of the I formation, which they're going through right now. First and 10 from the 34-yard line. Dorsett up the middle near the 40-yard line. And Kavanaugh is warming up on the sidelines. Matt Kavanaugh has had stitches taken in his elbow. He's come out now with the trainer and is throwing the football along the sidelines. Jeff Massarelli made the tackle on Dorsett that time after the gain of five. Tony Dorsett from the tailback position out of the I formation, taking one of his favorite plays, the sprint draw, which we've seen him do several times today. It's been the sprint draw, the power pitch, and the isolation or the blast play. Those are the three big ones that he runs. Uh, he operates well out of the beer, but I think he prefers the tailback slot, the I formation. Tom Sindelwald now in at fullback. Usyk running the option. Crosses the 45-yard line. Gets near midfield. Tommy Usyk coming in from Matt Kavanaugh, running the option well, picking up enough yardage for the first down. There you see Kavanaugh on the sideline. 
Dorset has gotten a new jersey, and Dorset is now going back into the game. His fourth airway jersey of the afternoon. Tony now has 124 yards so far today. How many jerseys for the season? Do we have a stat on that? I don't know. Uh, they say it's over $500 worth, so I guess you can figure it up. First and 10 in West Virginia territory. Out of the I formation, Hutton fighting for yardage. Getting close to West Virginia territory, near midfield. A gain of about one yard to midfield. Number 47, Paul Jordan, the free safety, a senior at six feet and 185, makes the defensive play. Look who's coming back. Matt Cavanaugh. Boy, he's getting a nice round of applause from the faithful Panther fans. And Tommy Yusick gets congratulations from the offensive coaches as he comes off the field for filling in so admirably as he has done off and on all year. 11 minutes to go in the game. Pitt leading 17 to 10. Second down and nine from midfield. Cavanaugh back to Dorset out of the I formation. Dorset got the 50 to 45 yard line. Stopped by number 13, Johnny Shell, number 45, Lester Johnson, and number 50, Ken Culbertson, all West Virginia Mountaineer defensive players. You know, you can just about figure that Tony Dorsett is going to get six yards or more on the sweep every time he turns that corner. He really uh, has a sense of keying off the lead block and making that cut either inside or outside. Tom Sindewall back in at fullback for the Pitt Panthers. Third down and three yards to go. Counter option. Kavanaugh in trouble. He's caught. And wisely that time decided to eat the football because a pitch at that particular time could have been very dangerous. Robin Mealy, number 82, the defensive tackle, only a sophomore, 230-pounder, makes the play. But he now has 5,800 career yards. He is only 200 away from that 6,000-yard mark. Larry Swider to punt on fourth down. Hits it from his own 45-yard line. Not a real good kick, but it may be turn out to be super if they can down it inside. Trying to get it at the one-yard line. A penalty marker goes down, and we'll see if they did, in fact, down the football. Flag we may have flag. a clip against West Virginia, or we may have uh, interfering with the catch. It could be a number of different things. It was thrown rather late after the ball had bounced around for quite a while, and they have marked the football inside the one-yard line, but we'll have to see what the infraction is. They're conferring with both Pitt and West Virginia players. And so, West Virginia will go on offense, and we'll be back with all of the action for you in just a moment. Clipping. The Panthers got a break as on the punt. A clipping penalty was assessed against West Virginia, and the Panthers will have a first down at the West Virginia 31. The reason that they retain the ball is because West Virginia never did take possession of the football. The penalty happened during the course of the kick and not on a West Virginia run back. If that had happened, West Virginia would have kept possession and then been assessed the penalty. But now, the ball comes back, and the Panthers stay on offense. First and 10 from the, pit, from the West Virginia 31. Dorset out of the eye formation gets very short yardage down to around the 30-yard line. Robin Feely, number 31, or rather number 82, makes the tackle for West Virginia. Nine and a half minutes left to play in this game. Pitt leading 17 to 10. That is an unusual set of circumstances on that penalty. Have you ever seen that happen before? I think so. <laughs> I'm not sure that I have. Out of the eye formation now on second down and nine from the 30-yard line of West Virginia. Counter option. Kavanaugh back to Dorset. Dorset crosses the 30 to 25 to 20. The Hawk has put it on. Inside the 10 touchdown. I'll tell you, he's a one-man offense. He is a one-man offense. Every time he gets the ball in that sweep, you got to figure he's just dangerous. He can go all the way. 32 carries, 161 yards just today. A 30-yard touchdown run that is very, very emblematic of the career Tony Dorsett has had. That is a typical Tony Dorsett touchdown run. Uh, an 82-yard drive as the Panthers started back deep in their own territory. Carson Long, again perfect. 39 out of 39 extra points. And the Panthers go out in front 24-10 to 10 with just nine minutes and five seconds left to play in this football game. I think this is the best example yet of the incredible athletic ability of Tony Dorsett. The 4.35 speed, the cutting ability, the ability to break a game wide open. Randy, wow. Randy Rudishan with a key block right down around the five-yard line helped Dorsett get in. 
Here it is from the end zone cover. You can get a, a wider look at Tony Dorsett as he turns the corner. Look at this burst right here. And watch this cut. And the balance, the ability to stay up. Unbelievable wow. strength as well as great speed. Tony Dorsett, the greatest running back in the history of college football. And a very typical run that has turned out to be a very key touchdown run for the Pitt Panthers and given them a little breathing room. They're back to a 14-point lead, 24 to 10, with 9.05 left to play in the game. The Panthers now will be kicking off, and Carson Long, every time he kicks a point, as he did there, his 39th consecutive extra point stretches that record that he now holds as the leading kick scorer in NCAA college football history. Back deep to receive for West Virginia, number 40, Lee Dowell is in the middle, flanked by the 44, Woods, and 32, Dave Riley. Long will kick it from the near hash mark. Magnificent kickoff as Carson Long puts it in the end zone, and Dwayne Woods will not return it. And so West Virginia will take over at their own 20-yard line with a first and 10. Tony Dorsett keeps closing in on more and more career records. He now needs just 180 more yards to reach the 6,000-yard mark. He needs 195 yards uh, uh, for a single-season record. Uh, and he needs 314 yards for... Uh, 2,000 yards in the season. 2,000 right. yards in the season. That would be unbelievable. <laughs> first and 10 Mountaineers from their own 20. Ken Kendra operating the option. Woods out to the 25-yard line. 80, Ed Wilamowski over to make the play for Pitt. And Woods picks up a big five yards on first down. It'll be second down and five. And he needs five more jerseys to finish the season. <laughs> Al Chesley into the game for Pitt number 55, replacing Jimbo Kramer at linebacker. As you see the situation here, as the clock continues to run here in the fourth quarter. Rodriguez goes out, split wide to the left. Steve Lewis is split to the right. Easley and Woods in the back, er, uh, thrown behind Lewis, intended for Lewis. Danny Kendra is incomplete. Lewis was open for a brief second. J.C. Wilson and Al Chesley were defending on the play for the Pitt Panthers. Pitt Panther fans still exhorting their number one, and they have every reason to enjoy it for the first time in 37 years. West Virginia, however, would love nothing more than to knock Pitt from the top of the national rankings today. Third down and five for West Virginia. Cedric Thomas in motion as Kendra rolls out to the left looking for throwing room. Out of bounds. Over on the far side, Bob Jury defending on the play. We that, may have a penalty marker down. That's going to be a penalty on Jury for a late hit, I believe. If there's going to be a roughness play. or a... On the play. Let's watch. I think you're right, Cupper. Bob Jury over there gave the receiver a shot. Just a little love tap out of bounds. Here it is again. Let's take a look at Mr. Jury. See if the jury's in or out. Cedric Thomas, the intended receiver, and he was well out of bounds when Jury hit him. Yep. Gave him a little tap. The officials talking to Steve Early, the offensive captain and strong side guard for the Mountaineers. Personal foul, first down for the West Virginia Mountaineers. They'll mark it from the 25-yard line of West Virginia. That'll move it out to the 40. And the Mountaineers will have a first and 10. Trailing 24 to 10 with eight minutes and 20 seconds left to go in the game. Steve Lewis saying uh, thanks, I needed that. <laughs> the Mountaineers looking to get another drive started. They had one very consistent drive in which they marched 52 yards after a fumble to score their only touchdown of the game. On first and 10, easily up for a four-yard gain out to the 44-yard line. Randy Holloway makes the tackle, and Walter Easley continues to do most of the running work for the West Virginia Mountaineers today. Cedric Thomas back into the game at wide receiver for West Virginia, replacing Manuel Rodriguez. Well, right now, I'd say Tony Dorsett is far and away the front runner for the offensive player of the game for Chevrolet. Kendra with a fake, a flare pass to Dwayne Woods in the left flat. Breaks a tackle, Woods down the sideline, crosses midfield and gets into pit territory near the 45-yard line. Run out of bounds by Jeff Delaney, the monster back 
and 55 Al Chesley, the linebacker on that side. Let's take another look at it, Cover. Oh, I've always liked this play. The slip screen or the quick screen as he uh, fires it out to Dwayne Woods, number 44. Quite a few good running backs have worn number 44. Of course, one of my old favorites, Kyle Root, the old Mustang. There you go. You're telling your age now, Cover. Well, First I, and I, I watched him when I was a kid. First and 10 Mountaineers from the pit, 45. Henderson trouble. Great defensive reaction by Cecil Johnson, the senior 220-pound defensive end on the right side who broke in. Hey, when we start talking about the player of the game for Chevrolet, Jimbo Kramer had 10 to 8 on that. Uh, and uh, uh, Chuck Smith having a good game for the Mountaineers. Kendra moving him now on second down and 10, dropping straight back, looking to throw over the middle. Incomplete, almost intercepted by Bob Jury, who was behind the isolation on Lewis now. He's, uh, as we mentioned, their leading receiver and had a chance to receive that ball. I think cover. Whoops, we lost. Well, what uh, he started to run there was a curl in pattern. The ball was a little bit high. Lewis tipped it and Jury nearly had a shot at picking it off. Cedric Thomas is split out, or rather, Manuel Rodriguez is split out wide to the right. Lewis to the left. And Kendra wants to throw again. The pressure is on. He gets away from the rush. Now he's really in trouble and drops back in West Virginia territory around his own 41 yard line. Kendra. Cecil Johnson and Randy Holloway, along with Don Parrish, putting the pressure on. This is what's known as the Top Cat Award by several people. <laughs> They're getting after that quarterback. This has always been the best pass defense there is. It's very hard to throw the ball when you're looking up at the sky. Jeff Betty will have to punt it again. He hits it from about his own 30-yard line. It hangs up. A fair catch is called for at the pit 20-yard line by Willie Taylor, number 29. Willie Taylor. And the Pitt Panthers will go back on offense, leading 24 to 10 with six and a half minutes to go. Hi, I'm Tony Dorsett. And when you're number one, you always have to be checking out your competition over your shoulder. And that's what I'll be doing this afternoon on ABC, watching Arkansas and Texas A&M. There's our man, Tony Dorsett. I'll tell you, that's going to be one kind of football game. Not only a good matchup of coaches Emery Brillard and Frank Broyles, a couple old rivals, but Ben Cowan, the leading rusher in the Southwest Conference, will be going up against big George Woodard, who in his second year there is already sixth in career rushing, and he's only a sophomore. That's at 4 o'clock right after this one, and we've got a game here. First and 10 from the 20, Dorsett. Out of the eye formation, running to the right, gets about three yards out to the 23-yard line. Pitt's own 23. The tackle made by number 78, Chuck Smith. And number one, Harold Woods up from the secondary. Six minutes, 20 seconds left to play. The Panthers lead the Mountaineers in this backyard brawl 24 to 10. And it has not been as easy as many people thought it would be for the Pitt Panthers this afternoon. West Virginia has played outstanding defense, and their defense has been on the field a great deal, Cover. Yes, it has, and it's not over yet. 24-10. Don't Kavanaugh. count the Mountaineers out yet. Excuse me. Kavanaugh, as you see, is back in at quarterback. Running the option play. Keeping. Kavanaugh fumbles again. The ball is loose, and I think West Virginia has fallen out. The Mountaineers have it at the 33-yard line of Pitt. Kavanaugh's third fumble of the afternoon. And 55, I... Jeff Massarelli, as you look at the Mountaineer mascot, comes up with the football for West Virginia. When I say it's not over yet, I mean it's not over yet. The Mountaineers are getting the breaks that they've been looking for, and they have an opportunity now. First and 10 from the pit 34-yard line. Dan Kendra, quarterback, 7 of 22 for 61 yards this afternoon, and he's rushed 12 times for 27 yards. Counter option. Big hole, easily breaking inside the 20, down around the 17-yard line. That's shades of the big Z right there. Was that your favorite play? Any play where I can run 15 or 20 yards was my favorite play. Walter Easley, the freshman, 6'2 and 210 pounder, finally stopped in the secondary by J.C. Wilson and Bob Jury. First and 10, West Virginia at the pit, 18-yard line. Kendra to Easley again, across the 15-yard line, down around the 14. Jimbo Kramer, number 58, makes the tackle along with Don Parrish and Arnie Wetherington. West Virginia capitalizing on that turnover immediately. There you look at Walter Easley. 
That is a good-looking freshman fullback. Very heavily recruited and a big man in the scheme of things today because Paul Lumley, the regular fullback, was injured during Tulane and has only been in briefly. Easily 15 carries for 77 yards. Second down and six. Dwayne Woods on the option at the 10-yard line. Down inside towards the 9-yard line. Don Parrish, 68, and J.C. Wilson, 21, make the defensive hit for the Pitt Panthers. I think there was a mix-up there. Did you see that? Looks like a broken play, but it turned out pretty good. Wayne Woods, a senior tailback, 5'10", 185 pounds, and he's muscular and strong. A lot of quickness. Third down and two now. The ball is just across the 10-yard line. Third and two for the Mountaineers deep in pit territory. Kendra, Kendra keeping. Turns it upfield, gets very close to first down yardage. I believe he has it. I'm using my right bionic eye, and I'm going to tell you he's got it. <laughs> Randy Holloway, number 70, and Al Chesley, 55, on the tackle for the pit defense. And it is first and goal for the West Virginia Mountaineers. With four minutes and ten seconds left to play in the game, Pittsburgh leading 24 to 10. West Virginia with a first and goal at the Panther seven and a half yard line. I'll tell you, we said at the top of the show that cliffhangers have characterized this series, and we're going right down to the, the nitty-gritty again. You couldn't ask for a better game than this one. Kendra wants to throw in the end zone behind Cedric Thomas, the intended receiver. Incomplete. J.C. Wilson defending on the play. Cedric Thomas had a step on Thomas. The matchup of Wilson. Cedric Thomas and J.C. Wilson. It's the veer pass. He fakes the veer option. He's trying to just lob it down here to Cedric Hartman, uh, hoping that he could maybe take a step and get to the outside. If Hartman had seen the ball a little sooner, he could have made an adjustment and maybe gotten that ball. We've got a West Virginia player injured on the play. It's number 74, Tom Crete, a sophomore, 6'4", 235 pounder, one of the offensive linemen for the Mountaineers. And again, it appears to be a knee. They're working on his left knee. A seven and a half yard line. Again, the option play. Easily dropped behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. Leroy Felder and Bob Fury up for the pit defense, making a great defensive play. And that'll bring up a fourth down situation, or rather a third down situation for West Virginia. How about this, Big Z? Notre Dame has beaten Alabama 21-18. What a seesaw season for the Irish. Unbelievable. Up and down. Just inside. That does put uh, Notre Dame back in the bowl picture. A win over Alabama. A big one for the Irish. Third down now and goal from the nine-yard line. Kendra wants to throw, rolling to the right. On the option pass, into the end zone, touchdown, West Virginia! Oh. Steve Lewis, number 33, again, the bread and butter man for the Mountaineers today with another touchdown reception, his second of the afternoon. I'll tell you what, we better not count out Dan Kendra as our offensive player of the game. We've got three minutes, 11 seconds left. Remember what he did last year. Here it is again, the culmination of a 34-yard drive following a pit fumble. A lot of poise by quarterback Dan Kendry. He waits till a precise moment. And there is his favorite receiver, number 33, Steve Lewis, just sitting down in the open area. They're going for two now, as the score is now 24 to 16. Into the end zone and overthrown, no good. And so West Virginia's attempt to pull to within six points falls short. 3-11 left to go in the game. 24-16 pit. We'll be back in a minute. Frank Signetti, I'll tell you, I got to admire that guy, the way he came out and went for the two there. I just, uh, I like that attitude of going for the win, and he didn't wait till the last one to do it. You know, he's figuring that, uh, what the heck, we can get the, the two points now, we're going to go get the ball back and score another touchdown. I, I like that. I'll tell you something, it, uh, it will either make or break the game for him here, Yep, not getting the two-point conversion. West Virginia kicking off again, the squib kick. And again, it's fumbled Randy Rudishan, fumbling the ball around the five-yard line, trying to bring it out, and he's in big trouble at the 10, at the nine-yard line, and Pitt is going to start in a hole. West Virginia really fired up, and the Panthers have had a lot of trouble holding on to that football on kickoffs and punch today. I'll tell you, the Mountaineers are really pumped up right now. Where's that mountain man? I'll bet you he's having fun. Randy Rudishan, the Pitt player who tried to <laughs> feel that football it seems to be there's been some confusion between the two receiving backs on to who was going to pick it up and it's happened on numerous occasions and it's cost Pitt a lot of yardage Rudishan's the head kamikaze isn't he isn't he the yes, hot he man is. yes he is going down on kickoffs that time he was trying to pick one up first and ten Pitt from their own nine yard line three minutes left to go in the game they lead 24 to 16 over West Virginia 
Dorset straight ahead out around the 15 yard line to about the 14. Lester Johnson, the middle guard number 45, a junior at 6'2 and 225, finally brought Dorset down. Second down, five. A gain of about five on the play. The ball is out at the 14 yard line. It'll be second down and five for the Pitt Panthers. Randy Rudishan in at wide receiver now. He's split out to the left. High formation, Hutton, and Dorset takes the pitch. Dorset coming to the left. Dorset at the 20 yard line, out to the 25 yard line. Big gain of 10 yards for Tony Dorset, 55. Jeff Massarelli makes the tackle for West Virginia. I'll tell you, that is instant ball control right here. Anytime you want to control the football, you get it to number 33, Tony Dorsett. This has been his favorite play, the power pitch. And look at the blocking. I'll tell Super you, blocking. Right along that front wall, and everybody's doing their job. Upfield blocking, downfield blocking, along the line blocking. He you gets see it the again. job done, yeah. First and 10, Pitt Panthers at their own 25, and this time it's Dorsett to the right. Hutton leading the blocking. Dorset at the 30-yard line, across the 30 to about the 32 or 3-yard line. And Pitt is going to their bread and butter stuff. Student body right, student body left, and let the Hawk do the job. 45, Lester Johnson, and 78, Fuzzy Smith. Playing a great defensive game. Dorset now with 189 yards on 36 carries this afternoon. I'll bet you they've run that power pitch close to 30 times. And it's picked up a lot of yardage for him, as you can see right there. The Hawk also has three TDs today. And Carson Long has added a field goal for Pitt's 24 points. Steve Lewis has taken two Dan Kendra passes for two West Virginia touchdowns. This time it's Dorset to the left. Dorset crosses the 35, breaks a tackle to the 40, and spins down right at the 40-yard line. Harold Woods covered him right there. Chuck Smith and Fuzzy Thornton making the defensive play for West Virginia. Well, if he gets 200 yards, he's uh, got, he will tie another NCAA record. But I don't know that it's too wise to be using Dorset this much this late because he may be a little tired. And remember, there's a, a big game left, Penn State. That's right, but they do have about uh, 13 days before they play that one. They have next week off, and I think that they'd be willing to pull out all stops to pull this game out. The clock continues to run down to 53 seconds. West Virginia has not yet called a timeout. Dorset to the right. Dorset at the 40, across the 40 to the 43-yard line, and the Panthers are running out the clock with 43 seconds left to play in the game. West Virginia now signals for a timeout. Finally, the Mountaineers stopped the clock as with, with 39 seconds left, West Virginia trails. It's pit 24 to 16. We'll be back with the final few seconds in just a minute. There's the situation, 39 seconds left. That's the big factor as Pitt leads 24 to 16 over West Virginia in a typical backyard brawl shootout. Tony Dorsett needs only one more yard this afternoon to tie the record held by Bill Merrick of Wisconsin and John Capaletti of Penn State for the most consecutive 200-yard games. And here it comes. Dorsett may not get it if he doesn't run. Running around trying to let the clock get run out. Dorsett. And there's a little fight going on down on the field right now. Somebody's getting on Dorset, and whoever got on Dorset has taken a great deal of heat from Matt Carroll, number 77. And now everybody's punching and slugging. I hate to see that cover at the end of a great game like this. Things get out of hand all of a sudden. Yeah, I hate to see it literally turn into a backyard brawl. I'll tell you something. Ken Culbertson, number 50 for West Virginia, is still getting after it. He doesn't want to quit. Chuck Smith was on top of Dorset and Tony Dorset, the team player that he is, trying to run a clock out for his team may have cost himself another record there. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is that we've lost a little sportsmanship this afternoon as tempers have finally gotten out of hand and the frustration has uh, come to the forefront. Let's see if we can catch the late shot. Uh, Tony Dorset, as you pointed out, is just trying to stall right here. He's running around a little bit, wants to run the clock down. He's really not that concerned with another record. And right about now, we get a late shot, and it's by number 82, Robin Neely. And that's what started it all, I guess. There's Frank Signetti over there trying to get his players off the field, and talking to Robin Neely and some other players. So we'll... Let things settle down. We'll be back in just a minute. Roses are red, violets are blue. Light beer from Miller, I love you. 
You've got a third less calories than the regular beer, and really are less filling, which is something to cheer. But what I like above all the rest is the way you taste, you are the best. Yes, blue is the violet and red is the rose, and if you don't believe me, I'm gonna break your nose. Like beer from Miller, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. With the largest number of people ever used in a Hollywood film, with the most exciting all-star cast ever assembled, Universal presents Two Men of Warning, the motion picture shock of the year. This is the one you've heard about, read about, and the one you'll never forget. Two Minute Warning, the incredible one. Rated R, now playing at theaters everywhere. With just six seconds left to play in the game, there were offsetting penalties, a late hit against West Virginia, and unsportsmanlike conduct against the Fifth Panthers made it no play. The play will go over, and Tony Dorsett left the field for his own protection because fans of both teams have come out of the stadium and, and along the sideline. And Dorsett left with 22 seconds left to go in the game. There you see Johnny Majors out on the field trying to get things settled down a little bit. Matt Cavanaugh is talking with the official. Frank Signetti was out calming his players down. And we showed you before we went to the commercial that a late hit by number 82, Robin Mealy, on Dorset started things. And Matt Carroll, number 77, one of the offensive linemen for Pitt, came to Dorset's aid. And that excited a couple of West Virginia defenders. And then all of a sudden, both benches were empty and things were getting a little bit out of hand. But the coaches and officials did a good job. Penalties were assessed. The play will go over. And we now have six seconds left in the game. Kavanaugh, quarterback, just going to fall down, and this will probably be the last play Kavanaugh, of the game. The as West Virginia has given the Pitt Panthers everything they could hope for today and a great, great football game, Cupper. The clock is not running. And apparently, there are still six seconds on the clock. Apparently, they inadvertently ran some time off the clock. And they're going to have to run a little more time. Now the clock is running down to two. One and the ball game is over. And so that's the final score 24 to 16, Pitt over West Virginia. Travel arrangements have been made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. Fly the friendly skies of United, where you're the boss. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Once again, the final score Family Pitt. Movie Special, Cicely Tyson and Sounder tomorrow on ABC.